This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Crestwood won the toss, and they will receive the football to start this game. Comments down below us are their red jerseys, red helmets, white numerals, white pants and trim. Bulldogs in their white jerseys, white pants, white helmets, blue numerals and trim. Crest will be moving from our right to our left as we do things here in the opening half. There is little or no breeze. It is just a chamber of commerce tonight here in the mountaintop for this one is Crestwood puts two deep men, Nick Kreitzer and Brendan DeMarzo, anticipating the kickoff from Berwick's Eric Montez. Sun setting off to our left over the astroturfed, well-marked stadium. Berwick looking sharp in its white. Crestwood in the red. You're right, Jim. Picture perfect for a fall football evening. It's weekend number eight of the high school football season. Just two regular season games remaining after this one. Bulldogs trying to keep it going as they come into this one with a 6-1 and one record. Montez has the signal from the officiating crew, and this one is underway. Kick comes up very, very short, fielded at the 20-yard line, and the return of the 30. There's a hit and a fumble, and the ball is loose at the 37-yard line as the officials confer. Berwick should have it, Jim. It popped right into a Berwick player's hands. He went down to the ground with it. I didn't see who made the hit. But it looks like it's number 13 being congratulated. That would be Shane LeVan coming up with that turnover. So Bulldogs get an early break. They will take over at the Crestwood 37-yard line. Against a Crestwood defense that has Ryan Harding, Derek Petrochko, Matt Dean, and Brandon Dominski as the front four. Linebackers Cole Kalchik. Jimmy Howley and Logan Arnold will check the secondary after this play. The 39-yard is where they move it. As the first play from scrimmage for Berwick, it's a handoff left side by Aiden Mason. He's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. T.J. Kolak coming up from his corner made the hit, but not a bad job in stringing it out by the defensive end. Kulak is at one corner, Evan Burleson the other. Brenda DeMarzo is at a safety, and Ethan Stoltz at the other safety. Second and ten. Berwick at the Crestwood 39-yard line. Berwick got momentum from the turnover, but with that hit and that defensive stop, Crestwood got some back. Three receivers to the right. Ryan Walbaugh gives straight ahead to Mason, and Mason this time has some running room inside the 35, down near the 32-yard line. Running hard. Yeah. By the way, there were three receivers to the right. None of them wore number four, so Sean Cheptock is not in that starting offensive lineup. Look at about six yards on that plunge over his left guard, Aaron Cashman. And you mentioned he did finish that run hard, Jim. Berwick needs to convert here. Third down, a long three for the Bulldogs at the 32-yard line. Ryan Lawball out of the gun. Has the snap, fakes handoff, keeps the football, looks for the first down yardage, and he's very, very close. He's inside the 30-yard line. He is Logan Arnold tripping him up. Going to be about the length of a football or two short. Berwick here in fourth down territory. You'll see a play from scrimmage here. So the Bulldogs will be going for it. Fourth down, less than a yard. The ball at the Crestwood 29-yard line. Eric Montez is a blocking back to the left side. I formation behind Lawbaugh. Tegan Wilk is the tailback. The handoff goes straight ahead to the fullback, Aiden Mason, and he gets the first down to the 25-yard line. So many weapons, which way are going to go? You're thinking left behind the power back. You're thinking Keegan Wilk is going to get that ball in the eye behind the blocking. But you slip it to the up back. Aiden Mason has proved himself on the run just a couple plays before. He slices over the right side of Nick Heimbaugh, and he finds a nice lane. Preston Robbins is a wide receiver to the right. Berwick, first and 10 from the 25. Montez is a blocking back to the right side. I formation that gives straight ahead to the fullback. Aiden Mason, not much doing. A couple near the 23-yard line. Over right guard Noah Craig. They ran him before, and they felt they have an area that they can attack. Berwick has nice size advantage in some positions, and they feel that they can make some soft spots. 
But nice defense. People coming up to the line of scrimmage for Crestwood to snuff it out. They mark it at the 24, so it's a second down and nine. Eric Montez has left the Berwick offense. They get an extra wide receiver in there in Blake Maurer. He's in a slot to the left side. Robbins outside of him. Keegan Wilk wide to the right. Second down call. Law ball has the snap, and he's back to throw, and he fires to the far side. Incomplete. Off the hands of the intent receiver at the 21-yard line. So it'll be a third down and nine. Preston Robbins was that intended receiver. Yeah, off his hands, but he wasn't there yet, Jim. All thrown a little bit soon. You want to get it out there quickly, but he was just starting to make his break. Not able to get out there far enough. Third down and nine. Berwick at the Crestwood 24-yard line. Just underway here in Mountaintop. Bulldogs trying to strike first as Wilk wide to the right side. Lane Cleaver to slot to that side. Lobo back to throw. Rolling right. Big pass rush. Gets the pass away. Completes it to the 20. Dane Mason to the 10 and down to the 5 yard line. Ryan Lobo dumps it off to Aiden Mason. He does the rest and it's first in Goldberg. Very nice. Aiden Mason with his fourth catch of the season. Slides out of the backfield on the right side. Almost like a delayed tight end. Gets about 8 yards downfield. Catches it. He's at an easy pace, but then accelerates after that to make a nice long reception. 19 yards to be exact on that reception. First and goal, Berwick at the five. He's the As Cleaver will be the tight end to the left. Robbins, wide receiver to the right. Fake and a pitch to Wilk. Keegan Wilk has stood up at the four-yard line. Nice defensive work by Garrett Swank as he tripped up Wilk on the Berwick went option. He got about a half yard near the four yard line, second and goal. I was fooled. I was following the uh, veer back inside, the one who play the fullback. I thought the ball was given to Montez, but no, a rather quick pitch then out there to Tegan Wilk, but well played on the perimeter, as you mentioned by Garrett Swank. Second and goal, Berwick at the Crestwood four yard line. I formation. Montez is the fullback. Aiden Mason, the tailback. He gets the call and another good defensive play right at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Harding's the man who he tripped over, Jim. But what happened is there was a collision into Harding by either a lead back or a pulling guard. Knocked him right to the ground, but he's in the hole that Aiden Mason wants to run, and he can't get over him. So it ends up being a defensive stop, but not so much by design as the man was sort of knocked to the ground and you couldn't get through him. Third and goal at the five. Montez again, the fullback, ahead of Mason in the eye. Law ball under center. Play action, rolls right, fires to the end zone, has Blake Cleaver for the touchdown. Law ball to Cleaver, five oh, yards oh, for the oh, score, and Berwick's on the board first. Oh, Berwick's been pushing with the run, pushing with the run, so a little play action pass. Rolling to the right after the play action. It's a good thing he was because he was being pursued hard by the backside defensive end. Gets it off just in time. Lawbaugh delayed just a little bit of tight end with a block. Found himself in the end zone at inside position. And with his tall frame, they're able to put it up there where he can catch it and easily make the reception. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point attempt. His kick is up and his kick is good. Time out on the field. 7.08 to go first quarter. Berwick is 7. Crestwood Duffing, you're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. Any questions, ask them. Let's dream and make it happen. Time to feel the way a friend can make your day. For the big decisions, every step of the way. Your hometown bank, the first place to go. Where your big time plans together will grow. This is Berwick football coach, Carm Francesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Berwick's on the board first. They recover a fumble of the opening kickoff. They go 10 plays, 39 yards. Ryan Lobaugh, 5 yards to Blaine Cleaver. It's a 7-0 Bulldogs advantage. 7-0-8 to go in the opening quarter. Crestwood yet to run a play, even though they received the opening kickoff. Good hitting, sprung the ball loose, popped on into the hands 
of a Berwick defender. The kick goes to the far side, headed toward the out of bounds, goes out of bounds, and Crestwood will, I believe, accept the penalty and take good field position to start their first possession of this game, going against a Berwick defense that has been lights out against the run. Up front, Eric Montez, Sully Slabinski, Ethan Hughes, Mason Lawbob, linebackers Mike Zalutko and Dallas Schechterly. Weak safety, Ryan Lawbaugh. Strong safety, Blaine Cleaver. One corner, Preston Robbins. The free safety, Tegan Wilk. And we'll check on that other corner. It's Devin Smith. So, Sean Shepdog nursing that ankle injury. Is in uniform, but it's not started on either side of the ball tonight. Crestwood, first and ten at their own 35-yard line. Petrosky out of the gun. Has a protector to either side. Has the snap, and he's back to throw. He's looking, looking. He's got to keep the football. He's got to be buried. Back at the 30-yard line. Dallas Schechterling blitzing on that particular play. Probably a run blitz by design. They wanted to try to get deep. They flexed out Brandon Naminski, the 6-6 tied end. They shifted him out as soon as they came in with first sound. Tried to get a size mismatch with him deep, but not enough time to throw. As Schechterly's blitz catches the quarterback for a six-yard loss. Second down for Crestwood. They need 15. They're back at their 30-yard line. Eye formation. Miller at the tail of tandem. Toss sweep to Ryan Miller. Looking for room. He runs right into Eric Montez. And he's down right at the line of scrimmage to the 30-yard line. If he didn't lose a yard, Eric Montez is a down defensive end in a four-man front. Takes on the block coming his way. Catches it easily. Maintains outside contain. When the runner decides to break inside, he two breaks inside. Not only playing contain, but making the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. You heard, That's perfect. You heard Crestwood coach Ryan Archangeli talking about uh, staying ahead of the sticks. They're behind them now. Third down and 15 from their own 30. Slot to the right, wide receiver left. Swank in motion to the left. And rolling that way is Petrosky. Big pass rush. And Montez almost had him. Mason Lawbaugh does have him. The ball pops loose, but they're saying he was down. Down around the 10-yard line. Berwick's bookends defensive ends all over Ryan Petrosky. Montez was there first, couldn't make the play, slowed him down. Mason Lawbaugh does get the sack back at the 11. Just amazing pressure. Who do you roll toward with these defensive ends? They roll left hard around the quarterback, but coming toward Aaron Mon Eric Montez is a mistake. And then once he flips the man back, there's Mason Lawbaugh. Loss of 19 on the play. And a bad snap, but the kicker, Ethan Chudak, gets the kick away. And at the 45-yard line, Tegan Wilk has it. Looking for running room. He gets only to the 41. Good coverage downfield by the Comets. Yeah, Brendan DeMarzo was the man who was able to trip him up. Smart play by the punter, though, not to go to a knee gym as that sort of short hops to him. It's almost instinctive to do that. But he kept his upright position, not downing himself in the end zone, getting it off. The officials for this game, Jim Elliott is the referee. The umpire is Ed Mikowski. Marino Valentini is the linesman. The line judge is Brendan Boyle. Dave Navaricki is the field judge. The side judge is Chris Barnick. The ball at the Crestwood 42-yard line. That's where Berwick has it with 5-10 to go in the opening quarter. And the Bulldogs leading 7-0. The Wilk. snap goes to Tegan Wilk, and he is hit and dropped for a loss back at the 47. Maybe he got to the 46-yard line. Crestwood read that play very, very well. Leading the way was Logan Arnold, a 6'1", 215-pound junior. It'll be about a five- or six-yard loss as well. I think they know on first down to look for the Wildcat with Tegan Wilk back there. They saw it. They sensed it. Came his way. Linebackers committed quickly. Second and 15, Berwick at the Crestwood 47-yard line. Preston Robbins wide to the right side. Lobo's in a slot to that side, so we'll look for a direct snap. 
to Wilk, who fakes handoff, keeps the football, and gets only a couple to the 45-yard line. Arnold again yeah. in on the play. Yeah, I think he's looking at that wildcat, and he might have the uh, assignment of shadowing Keegan Wilk when it goes wildcat. When he came here to the near side, so did Logan Arnold. When he comes up the middle, so does Logan Arnold. They'll gain a couple, but uh, Berwick needs more than that. Third and 13 for the Crestwood 45. Tegan Wilk wide right. Slot to the left. Blake Bauer in the slot. Preston Robbins outside of him. Lob under center. Straight drop back to throw. Looking, looking, looking. Big pass rush. He's in trouble. Gets away. Throws a pass to the last moment and throws it out of bounds. So he was being pursued. Sorry, Jim. Derek Petrach. Uh, big time strength trainer on this team but he's rolling left he realized it's the lineman chasing him he's still looking downfield hoping to complete the pass when he runs out of sideline he squares the shoulders enough just to throw it downfield out of bounds but in the direction of a receiver and there's a penalty against Berwick, but it's declined. That is a big defensive series for Crestwood. Huge. I know we're early in the game, but Berwick with a 7 nothing lead, taking over at the Crestwood 42-yard line, and negative play after negative play. Logan Arnold showing that he is a good rover for this team. In trouble for spotting that ball back to the original line of scrimmage. Eric Montez punting instead of Sean Sheptock. Brendan DeMarzo, a junior, back anticipating the punt. Jake Lanning with a good snap. And the kick is away. And a nice kick. DeMarzo will let it go over his head, hopes it goes into the end zone, and it does. So Crestwood will take over at their own 20 with 3.30 to go in this opening quarter and Berwick leading 7 to nothing. Fast moving first quarter with a lot of running. Crestwood hasn't been able to make anything happen. Brian Miller, their star runner, ran once for no gain. Brian Petrosky sacked on both of the other occasions with offensive snaps for minus 25. They had a chance in the uh, opening play as they received the kickoff, but that was fumbled back to Berwick immediately. First and 10 for the Comets at their own 20. I formation behind the quarterback Petrosky. Miller gets it off the right side. He's got some running room. He gets over the 25 to the 26. Preston Robbins comes from his corner to make the stop. But a nice running play on first down for the Comets. A gain of six. Berwick was blitzing up the middle, so the linebackers aren't able to move laterally. They're going through the line of scrimmage. Preston Robbins does have to come up. Keegan Wilk joining him to make that tackle. So it's risky when you go with the blitz. Sometimes it pays off big dividends. Other times you can be burned. That time burned a little bit. Harding the fullback ahead of Miller in the I formation. Petrosky under center. Fakes to Miller. Back to throws. Plants the feet. Throws it. Incomplete. In here at the 35-yard line. Pass intended for DeMarzo and terrific coverage there by Devin Smith of the Bulldogs. Right there with them. They tried to throw it high, realizing Devin Smith stands at about 5'8". They thought they'd be able to get it up high, but too high to the sidelines. A great inside position by the corner, Devin Smith, who really played the receiver and then the ball. Third down and four. Press with their own 26-yard line. Three receivers to the right. Out of the gun, Petrosky has the snap, rolls right, fires, sets up a screen to Miller. Miller has some running room over the 30 and out to the 35-yard line. Nicely done. First and 10, Crestwood. It was really done well, Jim. Miller ran exactly to the spot that Eric Montez vacated in his pass rush on that screen. They know Montez is going to be putting his ears back and coming hard. He's going to leave that area. It's not his responsibility in a screen, but there's going to be a vacant area there. He caught the ball, followed his blocks, and he got the first down conversion for his team. Nine yards on the pickup. First and ten. Crestwood at their own 35-yard line. A lot of shifting now. They end up with the running back, Miller, deep in the backfield. Petrosky under center, gives to Miller. Miller looks for room, and Eric Montez says, no way. Right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's helped on the inside as well by the defensive tackles, in particular Ethan Hughes. 
stalling things up, and then Eric Montez crashing on down. So Berwick controlling the line of scrimmage now without needing to blitz. Second and 10, Comets at their own 35. Garrett Swank wide to the right side. Petrosky under center. Again, a lot of shifting, and we have a stoppage of play. I think the uh, side judge was afraid that the down was marked wrong, but he, he's happy now, so they're going to continue. I formation behind Petrosky. Play action, rolls right. Looking to throw, fires a pass in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Ryan There's Hardy. Flag on the far sideline. There is a flag down. It will be third and ten, pending the penalty. Mike Salutko had real nice coverage, even if that was caught near the line of scrimmage. All of this shifting in motion, Jim, I'm not sure that Crestwood's totally getting set for every play. I thought there was a play or two where one man gets set and the other goes in motion without that full second counted off. I believe that's what the penalty was. Berwick will decline and set up a third and ten. And Peyton Williams will come in replacing Mike Salutko, so they'll get an extra defensive back in there on third down and ten. Comets slot to the left. Swank wide to the right. Miller's the protector to the left of Petrosky, who waits the shotgun snap. Has it, gives it to Miller, conservative play call, and Miller will not get back to the line of scrimmage. They wanted to go with counter trade, Jim, but Anthony Cisco had penetration. They were pulling the tight end the no, moment people to block. Right? Dick Brandon Naminsky wasn't able to get over to where he needed to get to. He ran into the man who had penetration. That was Cisco, who blows up the play, sets up the fourth and eleven. Ethan Chudak will be back to do the punting for the Comets. Derek Petrochko does the long snapping. Low snap again, but a line drive kick is away. It takes a great roll where Crestwood is concerned. And it will be down, and they're saying that... So be uh, half the distance line, penalty, ten, or no, it won't be. It'll be a 10-yard penalty in the hold. First and 10 at the 16-yard line of Berwick. Bulldogs cashed in on a fumble recovery in special teams. Now Crestwood tries to do likewise. 7-0 Berwick, 45 seconds to go opening quarter. Miller to the left of Petrosky, who waits the shotgun snap. He has it. He's back to throw, and he's looking to Naminsky in the end zone, and it is incomplete. 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 Naminsky with that big size advantage, but good coverage down there that time by Preston Robbins. He had the inside position, and he's playing the man against the back line of the end zone. He's able to jump even if Naminsky... He's able to pull that on in. He's not going to get a foot to tap inside. So, yes, wonderful position. Tough man-on-man -man coverage, and Berwick's still playing it man-on-man, -man, not getting any help from the free safety. Second and 10 from the Berwick 16. A lot of shifting. Miller ends up as the back to the right of Petrosky. And Miller gets the call, tries the right side, and it's a terrific defensive play by Mike Zalutko right at the line of scrimmage. Really, really was, Jim. He sensed it, whether he was on a designated run blitz or whether he could see that call and came crashing on in. A very aggressive play. And that will be the final play of the opening quarter with the score. Berwick 7, Crestwood nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM.
Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency. 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. Berwick Bulldog football. In HLM Sports. In the first, Bloomsburg is leading Hughesville 14 to 0. In the first, Danville and Shimokin are tied at 0. And in the first, Central Columbia leads Warrior Run 2 to 0. For HLM Sports, I'm Raven Klein. Berwick Bulldog football. HLM. At high school in Mountaintop, Berwick leads 7 0. But when we start this second quarter, Crestwood with the football at the Berwick 16-yard line, where they'll be facing third and 10. The Comets will be moving far left to a right. This uh, quarter's going to get started a little bit late. There was a lot of confusion as to whether Crestwood had called a timeout or whether the quarter had ended. And finally, they decided the quarter had come to an end. And we'll go to the other end. Crestwood moving from our left to our right, facing a big third and 10 at the Berwick 16, trailing the Bulldogs 7-0. Three receivers to the right. Petrosky out of the gun. Harding, the protector to his right. The sole receiver on the left is six foot six Nemensky, who's a tight end right now. Petrosky has the snap and he rolls right. Big pass rush, throws to the other side, but over the head of the intended receiver who had fallen down. <laughs> it was a tackle eligible play. And well, 66 was the player that the pass was headed for. It was headed for him, Jim. I think it was going to be a tight end screen. Naminsky pushed the tackle down in that tackle. Big 66, Tyler Cesario, was sort of getting out there in, in the wall. Nemensky may have tripped and couldn't get over to that area, so it had an odd look. They're going to line up for a field goal. The hold will be at the 23. This is a 33-yard field goal attempt by Alex Romanowski, a junior. To the Garrett Twank with the hold. The kick is up, and the kick is no good. No good. Plenty long enough, but off to the left. So Berwick holds. The Bulldogs survive that gap on special teams, and they'll take over first and 10 at their own 20. Just underway here in the second quarter, Berwick leading 7-0. A gap it was, Jim, and I didn't see it clearly enough to know who was to blame, but somebody didn't get out of the way of the low-bouncing punt. It may have hit somebody upfield before it got to Tegan Wilk, who I thought was still a little too close to the ball, but, you know, he has those ball skills where sometimes he can pick up the late-bouncing ball. That time, even though he backed away, I don't know if it hit him or not, but it did hit somebody. Crestwood awarded the opportunity, comes away without points. So Berwick, moving from our right to our left in this second quarter, first and 10 Bulldogs at their own 20-yard line. As they option to the left in the pitch the last moment to Aiden Mason, and he gets over the 25, out to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line is law ball. Brings it down the line, pitches with the left hand to Aiden Mason. And they'll get nine yards on that. It's uh, really well. I thought, again, that the fullback, uh, Eric Montez, had the ball. So they're really faking the very well. He pulls it out, the quarterback keeps it, and he might have been three yards past the line of scrimmage before he did the left-handed pitch, as you mentioned, but executed wonderfully. Second and two. The ball at the 28-yard line. Slot to the right. I formation and Mason the call big defensive hit the ball may be loose as the officials confirm there was a hit they're on piling them no one's showing the possession either way the big hit was by Crestwood's number 70 Matt Keith uh, Aiden Mason's back in the eye and by the time he gets just a step from his center the man is angling in the backfield to him. Really jolts it, knocks the football out. Blaine Cleaver diving in. Mason also fighting for the ball. Won't gain anything, but they won't lose possession. Third down and three, Berwick. At their own 27. 
I formation. Montez is the fullback. He gets the call. Eric Montez straight ahead, and I don't think so. It was a short three. Needed to get a little bit beyond the 20. Chain gang looks like they want to move the change, yet Crestwood's cheering. Oh, the spot is short. His knee must have hit a little bit earlier, short of the 20. So fourth down and inches Berwick, but it's inside their 30-yard line. And Ryan Lawbaugh checked with the sideline and came on. They moved the chains. Oh, I guess they would. I, I, but it's not like the way that, you know, they got to keep those chains out there stretched where we can see them better. Jim. Yeah, the ball is short of the 30-yard line. I thought, I thought it was short. Wilk in motion to the right. Lawbaugh back to throw. He will not throw. He'll keep it, and he'll be buried again. Crestwood saying they have the football, and they do. Berwick has turned it over again. I was ready to compliment Ryan Lawbaugh in the fact it's worth taking the loss but not risking the pitch. He did not have the pitch right-handed that time because of the way it was being defended. They came in, played contain. He was going to have to take a loss of a yard. But somehow as he is hit and going down, he loses possession of the ball. Crestwood now has it. It's been a game that's been a little sloppy with the controlling the football, Jim, and Crestwood has an opportunity here. Second great opportunity for the Comets in the first half with 10.53 to go and Berwick leading 7-0. Petrovsky out of the gun. Miller to his left. Petrovsky play action. Back to throw has Garrett Swank. Swank gets by one man and another down the sideline and he's ridden out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Nicely done by Garrett Swank, their second leading receiver on the season. Simple little five-yard out. He's very wide to the right. At the numbers, goes down in six yards or so and squares it neatly. The man who needs to make the tackle is the cornerback. He puts a hard hit on but doesn't bring him down, doesn't knock him out of bounds. And Garrett Swank regains his balance and stretches that. 15 yards on the reception. Crestwood, 15 yards away from a tying score. Petrovsky has the snap. Straight running play by him, and he slips down right about the line of scrimmage, covered by Blaine Cleaver. Blaine Cleaver's there. Dallas Schechterly is there. The defensive tackles are holding their own. First actual design run we've seen by quarterback Ryan Petrovsky from the shotgun over his right guard, Matt Dean. A couple of updates from Battle of Unbeatens tonight. Dallas 14-0 in the first quarter, leading Valley View. Southern Columbia and Wyoming and area, scoreless after one quarter play. Personal foul against both sides. There was a personal foul against Berwick, a personal foul against Crestwood. It'll be offsetting penalties. It'll be second and ten. I didn't notice anything, but the officials are a lot closer to things, and you want to keep a game in check if things are getting a little bit chippy. It'll be second and ten after they play the quarterback run up the middle very well. Naminski is a wide receiver now. 6-6 target. Well out to the left. Preston Robbins on him. One-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if Petrosky goes that way. He's looking that way. He's looking. He's looking. Here comes the rush, and he's sacked back at the 22-yard line. Eric Montez with the sack. Good job by Robbins staying with Naminsky. It was clear that Petrosky wanted to go that way. Naminsky wanted to run a slant in pattern. They had room. He had inside position. But Montez is interposing himself, rushing from that same side, the left. So as he's looking, I don't know if he felt he can get it over Montez's hands, pulled it down, wanted to try again, couldn't. And before you know it, Montez is on top of him, and he just can't run away. That sack will lose about seven yards. Third down and 16, back at the 21-yard line. Four and a half sacks of the season for Eric Montez. Petrovsky, third and long, back to throw, looking for the end zone to Garrett Swank, and Swank makes a one-handed catch deep in the end zone for the touchdown. Garrett Swank with a terrific play deep in the corner of the end zone. A lot of attention goes to the tallest receiver on the fade pattern. Instead, they go the opposite side to the number two receiver in Garrett Swank. He proves that he can do it. He gets half a step on Preston Robbins. They're deep in the end zone, about three yards from the end line. He reaches out with his right hand and pulls it in. 21 yards on the reception. And now, on to attempt the extra point. Is Alex Romanowski trying to tie it? His kick is up, and his kick is good. Todd on the field. 
9.50 to go, first half. Berwick 7, Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. It's Alexander Family Buick GMC's end of summer clearance sale. Great summer sales have left us overstocked with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles. One owner, local trades, off-lease cars and trucks, all reduced to sell. Get a 2017 Chevy Traverse for only $19,988 and an 18 Nissan Maxima, only $18,988 or a 17 Chevy Cruze, now only $13,988. Check us out online or stop and shop in Bloomsburg for the lowest price guaranteed. Alexander Family Buick GMC. We're taking deals the other guys won't. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Crestwood has tied it up. A 21-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Petrusky to Garrett Swank. And it is 7-7 with 9.50 remaining in the half. Romanovsky's kick is a low-line drive. Field by one of the up men at the 28-yard line to the 30. And a big hit on that returner at the 38-yard line. It was Preston Robbins on the return for the Bulldogs. Berwick will have great position. They're a little hesitant to kick it deep, knowing how dangerous Berwick's return people are. But as you've mentioned many times in the past, Jim, if you kind of squib it or don't get it deep enough downfield, an immediate return from there, you're approaching midfield, just eight yards away. First and ten Bulldogs at their own 38-yard line. Score tied at seven. Berwick has turned it over twice in this opening half. Crestwood cashed in once. Law ball out of the gun with three receivers to left. Has the snap. Keeps the ball himself and gets over the 40. Good first down carry. Ryan Law ball. That's the zone read. Berwick has a lot of different types of plays where there are options. I think a lot of the zone reads may be predetermined. He's going to ride his tail back or his, his setback who's to his left off to the right in a sweeping action. Pull it on out and then take it up the middle. A successful four-yard gain. Second and six, Bulldogs. The kind ball, the center over the football at the 41-yard line. Again, three receivers to the left. Law ball gives to Mason. Mason running hard, close to the first down yardage over the 45-yard line. He did run hard. Brendan DeMarco coming up and taking the feet out from under him, but not until he approaches that chain. Just about the length of a football short of converting for the first down. Third down and one, Bulldogs at their own 47-yard line. Tegan Wilk wide right, slot to the left. Law ball out of the gun. Fakes handoff, keeps the football, looking for the first down yardage. I think he has it. I think the tackler actually took him on into the play. He was wrapped up by Paul Kakalichek. And in the tackle, he allowed himself to drive the man to the chains. They're going to call it just short, Jim. Place where you go for it, though. You're right about at midfield. I think Berwick will take the chance here. Less than a yard to go. The clock shows 8-10 remaining in this opening half, and we have a timeout call. Score tied at 7. You're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio HLM. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne Counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Berwick is going for it. Fourth down and less than a yard. They have it just short of their own 48 yard line. Score tied at 7, 8.09 to go in the opening half. Timeout now by Berwick. This one officially called. Timeout. Well, what was the one previous? Well, there's some debate. Berwick coaches up the booth with us said they did not call it. They thought the timeout was for a measurements, and they didn't signal it to Crestwood. 
and it looked like they were going to be slow in bringing the chains out. Both teams went to the sideline, huddled with their coaches. No one charged with that timeout, and then they never brought the chains out either. So anyway, they come out. Uh, Berwick looks at it. They don't like the look of what they see. They call a timeout. I think a quarterback sneak happens to be there. I think you know the snap count. You can even goose that center. It wasn't a goal line type of defense, and that might be where Carm Francesco said, hey, let's take time out. If they're going to put gap guards in there and try to stuff this, we'll just audible and take take the seam that's open. Fourth down and less than a yard. Aiden Mason will line up as the fullback. Tegan Wilk, the tailback behind him. Eric Montez is in as a blocker to the right. Of course, he can push the quarterback as well, who is directly under center. Fourth down. Here we go. Law ball will take it. He'll get the push for Montez. He'll go off the left side, and he'll pick up a couple to midfield. First and ten, Berwick. Yeah, I think once you saw that Crestwood wasn't going to go into a goal line type of look and put the big guys inside and take the A-gaps away, you were going to go with that quarterback sneak. You have strong offensive linemen. They know the snap count. You have an aggressive quarterback. You have Aiden Mason and Eric Montez who can give a push. That should be an automatic, and they, they got it. Tegan Wilk lines up wide to the right side. Blaine Cleavers, a tight end on the left. First and ten, Berwick from midfield. Law ball under center. Straight drop back to throw. Looking, looking, looking long downfield. Has Wilk, makes the catch over the shoulder and goes in for the touchdown. Tegan Wilk in from 50 yards out for the score. He beat KJ Kulak, who then hit him in the end zone and drew a flag after that. Tegan Wilk on the right side, as you mentioned, basically a post pattern. As pure a post pattern as you can get. His superior speed gets him three steps beyond the cornerback, Kulak, who can't catch him. And then a needless hit in the end zone will add a penalty on the kickoff after. Tegan Wilk from Ryan Lawbaugh. And Berwick regains the lead. They convert on fourth down. And then get the touchdown pass as the officials conferring. About the flag that flew. It appeared that Wilk was a couple yards into the end zone after getting the touchdown. And then the big hit came well after the play. Might be determining on how. You know, it could be put here on the PAT or it could be put on the kick. I don't think there was any retaliation after the last hit. See if the officials turn toward us and give us the signal. They're explaining it to the Berwick coaches right now. Carm Francesco coming out to the numbers to get the word from Jim Elliott, the referee. Touchdowns, good. Personal foul against Berwick. No, they're pointing Crestwood. Crestwood and personal foul against two against Crest. Up, oh, he pointed <laughs> wrong. Touchdown. Well, he's point not going to win points for sign language, Jim. It looks like two personal fouls. Offsetting. Yeah. And now he'll explain things to Ryan Archangeli. Yeah, I, I think he signaled it wrong. He, he, he signaled personal foul. Crestwood went to signal a personal foul. I believe he wanted to signal it against Berwick, pointed wrong, and then pointed back toward Berwick. So, yeah, I'd want it explained, too. It's kind of confusing. I didn't see the retaliation, but you can see the late hit in the end zone that gets people very, very upset. You don't want Tegan Wilk taking blind cheap shots out there. And maybe someone from Berwick went down as a protector. Extra point attempt coming from Brendan Hinkle. Trying to tack one on to the Berwick lead here. High snap. Good job by Tegan Wilk. Gets it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field, 7.32 remaining. Opening half, Berwick 14, Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Northeast Pennsylvania, it's your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are First Keystone Community Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. This is Berwick football coach Carm D. Francesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick.
SHLM. Down pass of this game, 50 yards to Keegan Wilk. Now we were under the impression that it was offsetting penalties. At least that's the way the official indicated, but the yeah. penalty is against Crestwood. Jim, I, I watched it on the uh, huddle camera that they have up here in the booth. The first uh, hit was obvious. We saw it. Keegan Wilk bounced up and went to turn and run out of the end zone, and another man ran into him. It almost seemed accidental, or they pushed and shoved each other. But they threw both flags against Crestwood. The first one obvious, and now the second one. So when you put all these 15-yard penalties together, they have Berwick kicking off from the 30-yard line, which doesn't seem to make sense to me, Jim. Here's the I kick. mean, they're on the Crestwood 30. Well, that's 30 yards downfield as the kick is uh, on side variety, and it's loose inside the five, inside the end zone, goes out of the end zone. Let's see how they rule this one. Touchback, it'll come out to the 20, Jim. Yeah, Berwick's squibbing it. Of course, you have to. Any kick is going to go into the end zone. They might have squibbed it sideways, but they got vertical movement on the football with a little too much oomph. Went through one man, through another, and then into the goal, and then out of the end zone itself, so it'll be a touchback. By the way, Andy, check your math. 215s does put it at the 30. It, <laughs> I get confused, Jimmy. Crestwood with the football, moving from our left to our right. 732 remaining in the half. 14 to 7 is the Berwick lead. You ever see a kick from the 30-yard line, Jim? I don't remember I one. I never saw one. Dallas leading Valley View 21-0 in the second at Peckville tonight. As Ball. Petrovsky lost the handle on the football, gets on it, but a loss of that first down play. He's had nothing but losses, been sacked on three occasions. That, uh, oh boy, that's about an eight-yard loss. That's going to put him at minus 40 yards rushing for the game now. Second down. 17 back at the 13 yard line for the Comets as we go under seven minutes remaining in this opening half. Great place for Berwick to put additional pressure on, set loose those down linemen. DeMarzo wide to the right. Dominski is the tight end on the right. Petrovsky is under center. Second down call. He rolls right to throw. He fires out of the backfield. It's batted down, incomplete. Mason Lawball got his hands on it. He avoided the block by the tight end who was outside on him, and the quarterback rolled his way. He wasn't going to let the quarterback runner get wide of him. He had the shot for the sack, but he saw the quarterback step to throw. He planted, and when the quarterback's arm came forward, his left arm went up, and he almost snagged one of those short interceptions of about two yards. Third down and 17. Crestwood with the football back at their 13-yard line. Slot to the left. Naminski wide right. Big size advantage on Devin Smith, but Petrosky's looking the other way, and he throws to an open receiver, but he overshoots That's his mark at the 35-yard line. Yeah, going for Garrett Swank, the touchdown man. He has fine speed. They curled uh, underneath on the sideline, and then he was flagging beyond that as the corner cheated up. You're right, Jim. He had some open field, but the timing on the pass just not there. Boy, it'd be hard to not look the other way, though, where Dominski at 6'6", and know. Devin Smith at 5'8", on him. They don't go that way, and Ethan Shudak is back to do the punting. The snaps have been low. He's one yard deep in the end zone. This snap is a good one, but the kick is partially blocked, and it will roll dead near the 50-yard line. I did not see who touched it, Jim. Did you catch it? He is walking at the 30-yard line now, and walking off the field might be Ryan Lawbaugh. He's at the 40. <laughs> he won't turn. That's the he number 10. It is, Jim, and he does put great pressure on the quarterback or on the kickers. We've seen that through the years. He gets good rushes on the punt. Something did affect the punt, whether it was the pressure itself or he got a hand on it. Both Berwick twin safeties, though, saw it coming down the middle of them on the roll, and after the miscue on the previous punt, they steered clear, and Crestwood gets a fortuitous roll. Now Berwick with an opportunity to add to a seven-point lead, 6.31 to go in the first half. First and ten from midfield. Slot to the right side. Law ball out of the gun. 
Hands the ball to Aiden Mason. Mason off the right. Pretty good first down play in the Crestwood territory near the 45-yard line. Yeah, it was. He was able to get himself over the right guard and right tackle. That's going to be good blocking. Noah Craig, Mike Salutko. He's able to push himself forward. Second down and five. Berwick at the Crestwood 45-yard line. Diane, the chains are sleeping. Just now moving the chain. Berwick with a couple of timeouts left with plenty of time. 5.58 in counting. Blake Mowers in a slot to the left side. Lawball now out of the gun. Mason to his right. Mason the call again. Aiden Mason has the first down inside the 40-yard line. Good, strong running is what I'm seeing, Jim. He had a, a, a seam between the down linemen. A linebacker reached and got him by his shoulder. He had momentum, spun away from that. Another guy finally hits him, but he's going to move the chains with power running about six yards. Berwick with the football at the Crestwood 39-yard line. Keegan Wilk, who caught the touchdown pass earlier, is wide to the right. Slot to the left. Lawbaugh has the step, fires to Wilk, has his man. Wilk avoids one tackler and another has the first down. Nice running after the catch by Tegan Wilk to near the 25-yard line. Yes, it was. Give him 12, but he should have been stopped at 5. Garrett Swang came up and tried to play him, went low, and uh, he spun away from the tackle at his ankles before the rest of the secondary is able to bring Tegan Wilk down. 14 yards on the reception by Wilk to the 25-yard line of Crestwood. He's getting double coverage now with the safety leaning his way. Slot to the left side. Wilk wide right. Law ball to the gun. Fumbled the snap. Picks it up. Looks downfield. Throws to Blaine Cleaver. And are they giving him the catch? Yes. They are. Terrific play by Lawbaugh after fumbling the snap. I thought he was just going to throw it away. Instead, he found Cleaver for a five-yard pickup. Yeah, he, he, he bobbled it, picked it up, kept rolling to the right. And you're right, Jimmy, would have been sacked sideways throw toward Cleaver on the sideline. Who's able to tap the one foot in? Second and five, Bulldogs at the Crestwood 20. Man in motion. And flags and whistles blow dead. I saw Crestwood move across, but they're claiming that they were uh, uh, movement on the offensive line drew them offside. Berwick is moving its huddle back. So Crestwood is right and that they were pointing to some movement there. It'll be second and 10 for Berwick at the Crestwood 25. 452 remaining in this first half. Berwick trying to add to what is a 14 to 7 lead. The Bulldogs will send three receivers to the left. Tegan Wilk, Blake Bauer, Preston Robbins. Law ball out of the gun. Looking to the left. Looking. Fires downfield. Overshoots his man at the 20-yard line. Blake Bauer, the intended receiver. Yeah, tried to go to him slanting on in from the slot position, but it sailed on him be a third and ten in a passing situation. Ball's over on the right hash. Berwick doesn't mind staying in the pocket, but likes to use the white side of the field. Third down call coming. Berwick probably in four down territory here with 448 remaining in the half. They'll send T and Wilk wide to the right. Slot to the left. Law Bob out of the gun. Here's the third and ten call. Law Bob back to throw. Looking, looking, pump fake. Rolls right. Looking, fires, has Mason out of the backfield. Mason inside the 10. Mason to the 5 and down to the 4-yard line. Nicely done by Ryan Lawbaugh. It really was. He rolled to the right. Mason started as a blocker with him on the right side. He then peeled off downfield about 6 yards, looked for the ball, went a little deeper, went a little deeper, and Lawbaugh flips it to him. He makes the catch and drives it on down. 20 yards on the reception by Aiden Mason. First and goal, Berwick at the Crestwood five-yard line. Mason to the right of Lawball, who operates out of the gun. Has the snap, gives to Mason. Mason! 
face and then standing up for the Berwick touchdown. Big hole by an offensive front for the Bulldogs, opening the way for Aiden Mason. They most certainly do, Jim. They're doing the zone read, and often it's the pull out by the quarterback, and he runs with it. But that time, the zone read was kept by Aiden Mason. He stops the uh, sweep action to the left, plants and turns up over his left guard, Aaron Cashman. And there's a huge seam on the inside by the good faking of the zone read. Extra point attempt by President Hinkle. The kick is off. The kick is good. Time it on the field. 4.19 to go opening half. Berwick, 21. Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident. Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. This is Berwick football coach, Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg, WBWX Berwick. HLM. Berwick adds to their lead with a seven-play, 50-yard scoring drive, capped on a five-yard touchdown run by Aiden Mason. Mason with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. He had the biggest play in that drive, a 20-yard reception from Ryan Lawbaugh. And Berwick has extended their lead to 21-7. 4-19 to go in the half. Ryan Lawbaugh's play on the drive, though, was outstanding. Fumbled snap. He's able to pick up roll and still hit his tight end, Blaine Cleaver, downfield. And then the play where uh, he's just looking, watches Aiden Mason release and hits him. Big play. Here's the kickoff. It will be fielded at the 10-yard line by Kreitzer to the 20. Far side, 25. Tries to hurdle a tackler. Does so. A nice return by Nick Kreitzer out over the 35-yard line. Preston Robbins, the man who went low, couldn't quite get over him with that hurdling attempt. But he does fall forward for a few extra yards. The line of scrimmage will be the Crestwood 38-yard line. Comets with their full complement of timeouts remaining. 4.13 on the clock. Berwick leading 21 to 7. In the passing game, Brandon Nemensky, we've been talking a lot about the six foot six tight end who's leading in a lot of categories and in, in receiving in the top ten in the league. But it's been Garrett Swank with the two big catches for his team. Petrowski out of the gun. Straight running play for him as he goes off the right side and gets uh, just a couple on the play. Ryan Lawbach coming up to close that down. He was actually being held on the play. And they'll give Petrosky four yards. He doesn't get out of bounds. He'll keep the clock moving. Second and seven. Second down and seven. Three on the play to the 41-yard line. As two receivers to the left, including Garrett Swank. Kreitz a wide right. Petrosky out of the gun. Has the snap. Back to throw, pump fake, then fires to the sideline way over the head of the intended receiver, Nick Kreitzer. That'll bring up a third down and seven. Berwick had it with Preston Robbins covered very well. Didn't really go with that ball fake, and it was just going to be an out for five yards. Berwick will get an extra defensive back in. Peyton Williams replaces Mike Zalutko for this third down and seven. And I have a birthday wish for a champion. As they have a Patron slot to the right ball. side. Wide and receiver left. Petrosky out of the gun. Has the snap. Pump fake. Then throws a pass. Diving attempt at the sideline. The official says yes. A catch at the 47. Complete. But short of the first down. The is making a diving catch was Brendan DeMarzo. Seven yard line. Fourth and one. This is a tough one for Crestwood. They're down 21-7. 3.26 to go in the half. I didn't think he got out of bounds either, Jim, and yet the clock is stopped. And now they're saying a first down. <laughs> you know, it's like they have the magic measurement there. They're putting it the length of a football short with the line to gain, and then they, and, and this is the second or third time we've seen it, and now they call it. 
First and 10, Crestwood at their own 48-yard line. Petrosky has the snap, gives the ball to Miller, and Miller's wrapped up at the 49-yard line. Blaine Cleaver making the stop for the Bulldogs. Ryan Lawball was blitzing from the outside, got a piece of Miller in the backfield, spun him around before Cleaver's able to finish him off right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 for Crestwood, just short of their 49-yard line, 2.45 to go in the half. Petrosky has the snap, fires to the sideline, has Swank flagged down on the play behind the line of scrimmage. Might be roughing the passer. It's about well, the only thing it could be. And that is the call. That is the call. He did make the catch for about a two-yard gain, but the penalty okay, will be a much more significant. Eric Montez with the hit. It wasn't a vicious hit, but they ruled it came in just a tad too late. So the call will go against Eric and the Bulldogs, and Crestwood will have it in Berwick territory with three timeouts left and 2.36 to go in the half. If they ever mark it off. <laughs> I don't understand. They have measurements yeah, without bringing the down. sticks out. You, know, you stop the clock for a measurement and want them to look at it better. I, you know, now everything's slow. You want to get a rhythm. You want to hustle yourself along. First and 10, Crestwood at the Berwick 31-yard line. Slot to the right, wide receiver left. Petrosky has the snap. He's back to throw. Has time. Now it breaks down. He's going to run with it. He's got some running room. And then he has stood up at the 29-yard line. Mason Warball among the people hit on the play for the Bulldogs. Berwick had a man really rush up the middle hard, and that forced him to sidestep and then come forward. That'll keep the clock moving. We'll be under two minutes. They give him three from the 28-yard line. Second down and seven. Crestwood at the Berwick 28. They'll send Kreitzer wide left. DeMarza, wide to the right. Petrosky awaits the shotgun snap, but he has it. He dumps the pass off to Miller. Miller gets by one man, but does not get by Mike Galuco, who and makes the stop Miller for a loss back at the 30-yard line. Super pursuit. Ryan Lawball was coming up and came up a little too fast, and that move lost him to Galuco, lining up at linebacker position to stop on the run. Crestwood will use one of those timeouts here. 104 to go in the half. 21-7. Berwick, you're listening to Bulldog Football on Sports Radio HLN. Too quick converted. The medicine shop. At the Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located at the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, Karen goes beyond the prescriptions. Discover the one-on-one -on -one customer service and dedication that makes Karen part of the culture at the Medicine Shop in Berwick. Stock up on everything you need to keep you and your family healthy all year long. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located on the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, where Karen goes beyond the prescriptions. This is Berwick football coach Carm Francesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Sports Radio HLN. Berwick Bulldog Football. WHLN Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLN. Jim Doyle and Andy Alicki from Crestwood High School. We have 104 remaining in the opening half. Berwick leads Crestwood 21-7. But the Comets have an opportunity. They'll have to come up with a big play. They have it at the Berwick 29-yard line. Fourth down and eight. Quarterback Petrusky back in. The timeout allows them to bring the injured player back onto the field. Slot to the right side, wide receiver left. Fourth down play. Petrusky has the snap. Back to throw. Steps up into it, looking long downfield, and it's incomplete. 
Intended for Garrett Swank in the end zone and Devin Smith with good coverage for Berwick. And the Bulldogs will take over with 58.7 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, wonderful coverage as you mentioned. Garrett Swank uh, speeding on down there. In fact, he gets off the line of scrimmage. I think sometimes he's beating the snap and I flag him. But they explode off that line of scrimmage and Devin Smith backpedaling him, then turning and running with him. Had excellent position. Fine play. The Bulldogs will take over the football. Second quarter score, Southern Columbia 21. Wyoming area nothing. That's a battle of unbeatens. Last we heard, Dallas leading 21 nothing over Valley View. Another battle of unbeatens in the second quarter. Here's Berwick. A couple of timeouts left in the ball thrown 29 yard line. Blake Maurer in motion to the right side. Direct snap to Walmart. He's got running room at the 40 to 45 to midfield and tackled from behind at the Crestwood 40 yard line. Ryan Walmart carries the football into Crestwood territory. The Bulldogs quickly to the line of scrimmage. 51.8 seconds to go in the half. Ethan Stoltz with the touchdown saving tackle from his safety position. 31 yards on the run by Ryan Lawball from the Crestwood 40. Mauer in motion. Hand off to him. Looks for some running room. Has some and gets to the 35-yard line. And there's the face mask. Not everyone saw it. The official nearest was blocked from it, but then the referee said, hey, I saw his head get twisted with that. So it'll be a five-yard gain. And then at about that point, there should be a face mask that's going to be marked off. Well, this will be big. Berwick threatening to score now. 30.8 seconds to go in the half. Remember, they have a good kicker in Brendan Hinkle, who has a 32-yarder to his credit. This penalty will take him to the 20-yard line for a first and 10. Again, they have a couple timeouts remaining. Clock begins to run. Slot to the left side. Lob up, out of the gun, has the snap. Looking, 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 rolls right. Looking in trouble and gets sacked. Back at the 24-yard line. One thing Berwick didn't want there, they will use a timeout here. With 15.2 seconds to go in the half, we'll keep it here. Yeah, you should have tried to dump that one away, preserve a timeout. You'd like to. 15.2 seconds and one timeout. You can still use that clock properly. You may not miss this one, but Lawbaugh, if he had the chance to do that again, probably would have taken it out of bounds or thrown it away. A timeout left is important because if they do complete a pass short of the end zone, you need time to bring that field goal unit on if that's the way you want to go. Yeah, or if you take the sack, you're going to have to stop the clock in some, in some way. So 15.2 seconds remain in the half. Berwick with the ball at the Crestwood 25-yard line. Facing a second down and 15. Berwick by our count with one timeout remaining. Yeah. Ball's on the right hash, so the wide side of the field is to the left. They often put the two receivers that way, and Keegan Wilk isolated by himself on the right, the short side of the field. So here we go, following the timeout. From the Crestwood, 25-yard line. Ryan Lawball out of the gun. Has the snap. No, Cleaver. it's playing Cleaver. Playing Cleaver is sacked back at the 30-yard line. They went to Blaine Cleaver at quarterback, and he took a sack. And now it's back to the 30-yard line. 9.4 seconds to go. Berwick takes a timeout. We'll take it as well. 21-7 Bulldogs. You're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio HLM. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing, specializing in metal and rubber shingles. Most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. 
This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Nine seconds to go in the half. Lobo long downfield, incomplete. Intended for Blake Bauer. Clock stops 4.2. Seconds remaining in the half. Berwick pretty much out of uh, field goal range after those back-to-back -back sacks before the incompletion. So we'll see how they play it. You would think the, the only thing available would be a throw to the end zone and hope. Well, you would think that. But if you have a delay, a draw, a quarterback draw, you might be able to run this on in. You know, Berwick's elusive enough. Uh, that things could happen. I think your chances are about as good with that as with the Hail Mary pass to the end zone. Slot to the left. Tegan Wilk wide to the left. Blah ball. Back to throw. Looking, looking. Fires on the middle incomplete. Didn't have time to set the feet and get the ball into the end zone as the first half comes to an end. With the score, Berwick 21 and Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Ready to experience the Ken Pollock Ford difference? At Ken Pollock Ford, we've combined America's best-selling truck with NEPA's most trusted dealer. Stop by today and experience for yourself why the 2019 Ford F-150 should be your number one pick this season. Take home the 2019 Ford F-150 today and receive $8,000 in bonus cash on select models. You'll be wishing you upgraded sooner. With safety to depend on and durability to rely on, Ken Pollock Ford will give you that Ford feeling. Drive away in a vehicle you want from a dealer you can trust. Ken Pollock Ford, 1120 West Front Street. Berwick and online at KenPollockFord.com. Somebody needs you. Make a difference in someone's life. Caregivers America is presently hiring direct care workers for their Berwick office location. Caregivers America offers next day pay, direct deposit, pay time off, and pay training. Create your own schedule. Clients close to home. Go to caregiversamerica.com or call the Berwick office. 570-759-7757. Caregivers America. If you have a child that's interested in gymnastics, or if you've been practicing the sport for years, then Axis Gymnastics Academy is where you want to be. Their dedicated coaches will teach you everything you need to know to perform your best, from the basics of flexibility, form, and style, to advanced techniques that will improve your rhythm and style during a routine. Call Heidi Rebuck at Axis Gymnastics Academy at 570-441-5969. That's 570-441-5969. Now enrolling for beginner to advanced classes at 917 East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. S.J. Kowalski, heating and air conditioning sells comfort. Since 1972, S.J. Kowalski understands the importance of doing business locally. They service what they sell and take pride in customer satisfaction. S.J. Kowalski is a trained comfort specialist, a Lennox dealer, and they are Northeastern Pennsylvania's premier dealer of Mitsubishi ductless mini split systems. S.J. Kowalski also sells and installs energy efficient Renai water heaters and geothermal systems. Call 1-888-Kowalski and ask about special promotions and zero interest financing. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Kim Doyle and Andy Lickman here with you on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. Bulldogs got the early break in this one as Crestwood fumbled the opening kickoff. Shane LeVan recovering for the Bulldogs at the Crestwood 39-yard line. Ten plays later, Ryan Lawball with a five-yard touchdown pass to tight end Blaine Cleaver. Biggest play along the way, a 19-yard pass completion from Lawball to Aiden Mason. Brendan Hinkle added the extra point, and Berwick had a 7-0 lead with 7.08 to go in the opening quarter. Later in that quarter, the Bulldogs turned it over. They could not get away from a punt. It touched a Berwick player. Crestwood recovered at the Bulldog 26. They drove to the 16, and early in the second quarter, Romanowski's field goal attempt from 33 yards out was no good. So Berwick retained the lead 7-0. But the Bulldogs lost a fumble by Ryan Lawbaugh in the second. Crestwood took over at the 30. Four plays later, Ryan Petrusky, 21-yard touchdown pass to Garrett Swank deep in the corner of the end zone. Swank making a one-handed catch. Alex Romanowski with the extra point. 
and we were tied at 7-all with 9.50 to go in the first half. Berwick came back with a five-play, 63-yard scoring drive. They converted on a fourth and one from midfield. And from midfield, Ryan Lawball. Long pass down the middle of the field to Tegan Wilk for the touchdown. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point. Berwick led 14-7 with 7.32 remaining in the opening half. Crestwood drove from their 38-yard line to the Berwick 29-yard line. Helped on a penalty or two, but they lost the ball on downs. Berwick took over at their 29. Got to the Crestwood 20. Couldn't get any more points on the board. I skipped the one scoring play. Aiden Mason, a five-yard touchdown run, capping a seven-play, 50-yard drive, had given Berwick a 21-7 lead after the extra point by Brendan Hinkle. There were two big pass plays on that seven-play drive. Ryan Lawbaugh to Tegan Wilk of 14 yards and 20 yards to Aiden Mason. That came with 4.19 to go in the half. That was all the scoring in the half, although Berwick threatened late. And at the break, it's Berwick 21, Crestwood 7. We'll check scores with Raven Klein. We'll check stats with Andy Ulichty. Stick around. You're listening to Berwick Football on Sports Radio HLM. Prices are falling on all our vehicles during the fall sell-off event. Happening right now at Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. It's Ram Power Days, so let's talk Ram trucks. We have over 100 of them on site ready for you to drive home. And you can get 0% for 60 months plus no payments for 90 days on select 2019 Rams. Or lease one for just $159. Jeeps, you won't find a better selection anywhere else. Lease a 2019 Grand Cherokee Laredo or a 2019 Cherokee Limited for just $199. So don't shop the rest. Shop the best. Come see the Kaiser Boys and experience for yourself the best selection, the best prices, and the best service and parts around. Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Route 405 in Muncie or Route 11 in Danville. Fairfield for the best deals. Leases are for 24, 36, and 42 months. Thirty-four ninety-nine dollars signing. Offers on select vehicles only for qualified buyers. Only must finance through Chrysler Capital. Offers end October 31st. See dealer for complete details. Fairfield. You're gonna love us. Berwick Bulldog Football. In HLM Sports, scores tonight. At half, Bluesburg's leading Hughesville 35-0. At half, Schmokin leads Danville 20-0. At half, Central Columbia leads Warrior Run 10-7. At half, Southern Columbia is leading Wyoming area 21-0. At half, Dallas leads Valley View 21-0. At half, Loyal Sock leads Milton 38-0. At half, Mount Carmel leads South Williamsport 34-0. At half, Shikalimi leads Holy Redeemer, 35-0. In the second, Jersey Shore leads Lewisburg, 25-14. At half, Granton leads Hazelton area, 7-3. In the second, Wyoming Valley West leads Abington Heights, 14-7. At half, Sealands Grove leads Central Mountain, 28-7. At half, Jim Thorpe leads Pottsville, 10-7. At half, North Schuylkill leads Blue Mountain, 19-7. In the second, Wilkes-Barre area leads Wall and Paw Pack, 28-24. And at half, Montoursville leads Mifflinburg, 35-0. For HLM Sports, I'm Raven Klein. Berwick Bulldog Football, HLM. Berwick High School Marching Band entertaining here at halftime at Mount Top. At the break, Berwick leading Crestwood by a score of 21-7. Stats from the opening half, Andy Lick. Berwick has the edge, Jim. Defensively, they're really playing well against Crestwood Comets. Uh, one breakdown, you know, the fumbles and short fields have made a difference. And one breakdown in pass coverage has uh, hurt them on the scoreboard. But against the run, boy, can't get much better. Ryan Miller, who's averaging 111 yards a game, has just five yards on six attempts. Berwick's been stuffing him. And then it's Ryan Petrosky, the second leading uh, rusher on the team at quarterback. Sacked on three occasions, tackled for loss on others. He has six carries as well, but he's at minus 34. So minus 34, factor in the five, and it's minus 29 rushes on 12 carries for Crestwood here at halftime. In the passing game, I have Petrosky at five completes and 13 attempts, no interceptions, and 49 yards. They've held Brandon Naminski with no catches, and that's impressive because he's a tough, one of the better uh, receivers in the conference, a height mismatch at 6'6", and yet he has not really been targeted 
here in this half as Burks defended him well. Garrett Swank, though, the number two receiver, has two big catches, two for 36 yards, including that 21-yard, one-handed touchdown catch. Brandon DiMarzio has a six-yard catch. Ryan Miller has caught two for a net of seven yards. 49 yards in the air, minus 29 on the ground. So a net of 20 positive yards on 25 plays for Crestwood. Berwick playing strong defense. For Berwick on the ground, it's 126 yards, 109 in the air for a total of 235 here at halftime. And that is impressive. Aiden Mason's been running strong, 42 yards uh, on the ground on 11 carries, including a touchdown run. Blake Maller has a five-yard tote. Keegan Wilk has tried it three times, but he's been knocked back. Three carries for minus three. Blaine Cleaver went in at quarterback, got caught in a blitz from the blind side, minus 10 for him. Ryan Lawbaugh has 34 positive yards on seven carries. They get 136 on the ground for Berwick on 23 carries. Looking that over, that does not look like the math is right. I'll double check. We'll get back to it before half. Six of ten passing for Ryan Lamba. He's done all the throwing, 109 yards. Tegan Wilk has caught two for 64 yards. Blaine Cleaver has caught two for 10 yards. And Aiden Mason has caught two for 39 yards. That looks a little wrong on this one as well. 109 yards in the air on 6 of 10 passing. I have a total of 235, but I think when I correct my math, that's going to come down. Sorry about that, Jimmy, but I'll come back to you. Okay, Andy, at the half, 21-7 is the count. Berwick leading Crestwood. You're listening to Berwick Football on Sports Radio HLM. You haven't had the best till you've been to Romeo's Italian Submarines. Romeo's Italian Submarines, you've got to try them. Romeo's Submarines menu includes wings, wraps, and so much more. Romeo's is also home to Sasser Sweet Stop, where you can get your ice cream on. Romeo's Italian Submarines and Sasser Sweet Stop. Open till 9, Sunday through Thursday, until 10, Friday and Saturday. 1306 Orange Street, Berwick. 570-752-8788. If you haven't been to Name Brand Liquidations in the Berwick Plaza Shopping Center, you're missing out on great values. At Name Brand Liquidators, you'll save money from 50 to 90% on everything imaginable, from bathroom vanities to bar stools to carpeting. You name it. Name Brand Liquidations not only sells a huge variety of merchandise, they feature name brands just like their name says at low prices. When you're in the market for anything, shop at the store that has everything. Name Brand Liquidations. Wishing the Berwick Bull Bugs a great season. See the winning lineup of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Also, quality pre-owned vehicles at Bear Chrysler and Berwick. Celebrating their 30th year, Bear Chrysler has a body shop and a full-service center servicing all makes and models. They've earned the highest possible rating from Chrysler and the prestigious J.D. Power Award for Excellence. Need a truck? Bear has a vast inventory, including the 2019 Ram Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Or choose one of 50 new Jeeps in stock, including Renegade, Cherokee, and Grand Cherokee. Bear Chrysler, 1127 Pine Street, Berwick. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing, specializing in metal and rubber shingles. Most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. A couple minutes away from the start of the second half on a half absolute blowout. Berwick beautiful night here in the mountaintop. Week 8 of the high school football season. Berwick leading Crestwood at the break 21 7. Andy has his calculator working now, so how about those Yeah, numbers? it's been a rough uh, full moon type of day for numbers. 30 yards of penalties on kickoff, and I don't know how it gets near the 30-yard line. What I did is all the individual numbers I went through were correct, but there's a lot of negative numbers, and I think I added them instead of subtracting them. As it is, Burke with 68 yards rushing here at halftime, 113 in the air for 181 
in total offense and compare it to the 20 we had for Crestwood. And you can see some dominance. But it's a sloppy game with too many turnovers, some sloppy plays, some sloppy penalties. And I think Berwick's dominance is being hindered some by that, Jim. They will get the football to start the second half. And third quarter has been a charm for Berwick this season. They've outscored the opposition 41-7. to That touchdown by Valley View when they got the ball at the 11-yard line. The only score against Berwick in the third quarter. And I think that says something about a program, says something about a coaching staff, because third quarter you come out after having a chance to talk about what happened, make some adjustments, and that's uh, that's nice to show dominance in that period. Yeah, too many coaches, the adjustment is the pep talk. Well, the pep talk, yeah, the guys are pep, they want to play. But make the strategic adjustments. I don't know how many strategic adjustments you can make You've held a team to minus 29 yards rushing and just 49 in the pass game. I guess you can look at some matchups. But, again, they're playing without the best matchup they'd like to have. They'd like to have Sean Sheptock, their tallest corner on that tallest receiver, and play some of the other matchups differently. But they will work on that, and I think we'll see less successful passing for the Comets as the Berwick coaching staff does look at that at halftime. 21-7 to is the Berwick lead. We'll be back with the second half kickoff. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Knott's Buster's Archery is a Hoyt and Elite Archery dealer and a full-service archery shop at 1895 West Front Street in Berwick. Knott's Buster's Archery services all brands of bows and crossbows. Gift certificates are available. Call 570-752-0499 for bow season or anytime you need the very best. Check them out on Facebook. Knott's Buster's Archery is at 1895 West Front Street in Berwick. 570-752-0499. Go dog. Whether it's the heat of the preseason or the heart of the postseason, teams will always get a little boost from playing at home. Speaking of a boost at home, State Farm can boost your savings when you combine your homeowner's insurance with your auto coverage. So score one for the home team. Talk to State Farm agents Lori Powell or Sean Black in Berwick or Melissa Price in Nescapec about big savings for combining home and car coverage. Give State Farm agents Melissa Price, Sean Black, or Lori Powell a call today. It won't be long before tax time rolls around, so remember to visit Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting for your income tax needs. ND Accounting and Consulting handles both business and individual taxes, as well as offering a variety of accounting services, including payroll, auditing, and bookkeeping. For tax and accounting services, look for Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting with two locations, 214 Pine Street in Berwick and 5929 Main Road in Sweet Valley. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faiths, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Both teams have made their appearance on the field. We're a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half here in Mountaintop with Berwick. Leading Crestwood by a score of 21 to 7. Again, next Friday, the Bulldogs will be at Dallas. Coming into tonight's game, Berwick trailed both Dallas and Valley View in the power rankings that determine the top seeds in District 2 Quad A. So, the best case scenario for Berwick to try to make up the ground would be to win here tonight have Dallas beat Valley View, and then Berwick beat Dallas on the road next week. Now, if all that were to happen, would that necessarily put Berwick on top? Not necessarily, because that uh, that power ranking system is fair, but it's very, very complicated, and they throw a lot of figures into a computer. So it's not like I can say for sure if what I just described happens, that Berwick would be the top seed, but certainly if all that happens, they would have a shot at it. You don't trust me to do it with my calculator? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, you know, I, it is fairer because 
in the past, Andy, even when they went to uh, so many points for beating a quad A and so many points beating this team and that team, what could happen is you could beat the top team in the state. and Or, no, you could lose to the top team in the state by one point, and you got zero points for it. Yeah. Zero points, whereas you could beat a terrible team, and you actually got points for it. Now everything is decided. You know, before we start this half, I look down to our right, and Brandon Aminsky looks to have some kind of sling on his right shoulder. I noticed in, in the second quarter where I'm expecting to see him, you know, in that uh, sort of two-minute drill, I'm looking, where is he? Is he left? Is he right? Is he tied in? And I wasn't seeing him in. So, yes, he's walking with the shoulder pads off, and he's going to be coming over here to the sidelines. Top receiver on the team, one of the tops uh, in, in the conference, and a strong defensive player as well. Yeah, that is a huge loss for Crestwood going into the second half, already trailing Berwick by a score of 21-7. to And the Comets won the toss to begin this game and elected to take the football. That didn't work out well for them as they... Fumbled that opening kickoff, led to a, a Berwick score, and doesn't work out well here as Berwick will get the football to start this second half. And if it's going to be a competitive second half, even without Naminsky, Crestwood almost has to have a stop on this opening possession for Berwick. And as I mentioned, it does get harder because Naminsky is a two-way player, is a big figure from his defensive end position. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, people see that, that he's not going to be there. Berwick may start attacking whoever his substitute is. It's not a team with a whole lot of depth. When Crestwood uh, kicked off in that uh, opening half, they kicked short. They didn't want the ball to go to Tegan Wilk or Blake Bauer or Alejandro Lopez. We'll see how they do it now. Second half ready to go. Alex Romanowski, a junior, has it teed up. Berwick moving from our right to our left in this third quarter, leading Crestwood 21-7. Second half underway. The kick does go high and deep to Lopez, the far side, over his head. Then he has to field it on the bounce at the 9-yard line to the 10, and he's buried short of the 15-yard line. So a good kick by Romanowski, terrific coverage by Crestwood, and Berwick deep in the hole to start their first possession of the second half. Yeah, Jimmy Hawley getting down there and making a, a good tackle in there deep. They will mark the football right at the 15-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will put it in play. Berwick huddles on the sideline. On occasion, they come out and go with the uh, Wildcat with Tegan Wilk. Berwick has had pretty good field position to start possessions in this game. Raw ball will operate out of the gun. First and 10 call from the 15-yard line. Gives the ball to Blake Bauer off the right side. He is running room and has the first down out to the 26-yard line. Nice sweeping action. Took the hand off, and of course, you fear that zone read, so linebackers can't over-pursue. Quarterback's been known to keep that and cut up the middle when you overplay it. But Blake Maurer on the sweeping action off of the zone read look. Gets to James on the first play. Ten yards of the carry by Blake Maurer. First and ten, Berwick at the 25-yard line. Sean Sheptock dressed but not playing in this game. He's got an ankle issue. Preston Robbins is wide to the left side. Maurer again off the right side. Maurer has some running room and gets out near the 34-yard line. So Berwick finding something early in the second half off that right side with Blake Maurer. Is there a flag down? They're talking. They've been slow throughout this, holding against Berwick on that side. The one thing they might be seeing, Jim, is the absence of Brandon Nemensky. He is the down defensive end, who I believe would be playing that side. They flip them depending on strength sometimes. But Nemensky is 6'6", 220 pounds, and very strong defensively. Now they've swept at that position, at the substitute on occasion, and got the corner. Unfortunately for Berwick, here on this second one, a hold helped them get the corner. Ball back at the 15. First and 20 for Berwick. Slot to the left. Wide receiver to the right. Ryan Lawbaugh. He's thrown the ball well in this game. Out of the gun. Keeps the football after a fake handoff. He's got room. 25 and out to the 28-yard line. Ryan Lawbaugh fakes handoff. Keeps the football. 
Picks up close to 13 on the play. We'll see where they mark it at the 27. So give him 12 yards. Well, Bring up second down and eight. Strong runner. Of about seven, 46 seven, yards eight. on the game ball now ball as a running ball. quarterback. Brian Lawball came into the game with 254 yards rushing, 4.5 a carry, doing even better tonight. Second and eight from the 27. Slot to the left, wide receiver right. Lawball out of the gun. Gives the ball to Lopez. Alejandro Lopez picks up a yard, maybe two on the play, Lopez third down coming. Well, set up a passing situation the from the right hash. Three yards on the play, it's going to be three yards on the carry five. by Lopez. Third down and five. Berwick at their own 30. And give Crestwood credit. They came up very good, very well from linebacking. Stuffed that right there at the line of scrimmage. Here is the third down call coming. We mentioned how uh, important it would be for Crestwood to get a stop in this first series for Berwick. Lopez lines up to the right of Lawball, who has the shotgun snap, and he's back to throw, and he fires. He has a completion for a first down to the 42. It's the tight end, Blaine Cleaver. And Blaine Cleaver targeted now for the third time in this game. Releasing from tight end. Might have been flexed a little bit to the right. Finding the seam behind the linebackers in front of the safety. Thrown with confidence by Ryan Lombaugh. Caught. And Blaine Cleaver then takes the hit, holding on to the ball. Blaine Cleaver caught a touchdown pass of five yards from Ryan Lombaugh for the first score in this game. 9.40 to go in the third. Berwick, first and ten at their 42 give is to Lopez. He has running over the 45 over midfield. Has the first down at the Crestwood 47-yard line. Alejandro Lopez weaving his way through that secondary of Crestwood. And Berwick on the move to start this second half. Yeah, gets himself through the line of scrimmage, works himself past the linebackers. Eventually, Ethan Stoltz, the safety, has to come up and try to bring him down. But even drags him for three or four yards. 11 yards in the carry by Lopez. First and 10, Berwick at the Crestwood 47-yard line. Slot to the left. Law ball out of the gun. Gives to Lopez. Almost hit behind the line. Breaks free and gets a couple to the 45, maybe the 44-yard line. Cole, could, <laughs> I practiced it. Cole Kakalichik, just a freshman at linebacker. Working his way in to make the hit that time. Played it really well. Second and eight. Berwick on the move at the Crestwood 45-yard line. Clock running 8.50 to go in the third. Bulldogs trying to add to a 21-7 lead. Tegan Wilk, wide to the left. Lava has the step. Gives the ball to Lopez. Hit and drop right at the line of scrimmage. Strong play in there by Crestwood's Ryan Harding. One of the defensive ends. And uh, he, he was able to knife on inside and make the hit. Third down and nine. Berwick, big call early here in the third. They have it at the Crestwood 46-yard line. Passing situation. Ball toward the center of the field. Could go either way with the pass. Tegan Wilk, who caught the 50-yard touchdown pass in that opening half, is wide to the left. Three receivers to the left. Law ball under center. Fumble the snap and keeps the football and fires at the last moment to Blaine Cleaver, who makes a diving attempt. And the official right there does not make a call. The one up here says incomplete. I don't think either had a very good view of it. My question would have been, he fumbled the snap, came forward with it and jumped and threw it. Was he past the line of scrimmage would have been my biggest concern. No official is looking to make a call. Are they huddling? No one's doing anything. And now a flag. And now there's a flag at the 50 yard Very, line. very, well, obviously late. And that is the call. The pass, pass, the, pass the, the line of scrimmage. Pass the line of scrimmage. So we're going to back okay. But it wasn't thrown at the time. It was thrown after a discussion of what's going on. So I agree that's probably yeah. the right call, but that's somebody should see that. There's a linesman. There's a line judge. They see where he is. That's where their call should come. Shouldn't be thrown by the referee after a discussion. And is that a loss of down as well? I thought it was. Ball back at 
midfield. They're still showing third down. And there's the hands to the back of the head. So, yes, it should be a loss of down. But they're still showing third down on the... On the scoreboard says four. On the far side, it says three of the sticks. The officials will do nothing in a hurry. <laughs> I don't think they realize what's going on. Now they change it on the sticks, but both teams are going to the sideline. Well, they're going to change to a punting okay, unit now. It was also a loss of down, so it's actually going to be So down fourth down, down Eric Montez, field. who's doing the punting tonight for Berwick with uh, Sean Sheptock not playing. He is in uniform. and Hopefully we'll be back 100% uh, next week for the big game at Dallas. So Crestwood, with the help of that penalty, does get a stop that they really needed here early in the third. Boy, this is just hey, taking a yeah. long time. Well, they should have not let the teams go to the sideline. Now Crestwood's coming out in the field and Berwick's going to the sideline. I mean, everything's right now after what should have been right very, very quickly. And why they're letting the teams go to the sidelines, I don't understand. They haven't started the 25-second clock, so I guess you can go to the sideline all you want. <laughs> there's been no timeout called, but there's been enough time for a couple of timeouts. The referee has to talk to both coaches. I don't think he has to. He signaled it. I think you need to get your chain gang sharper. Your head linesman's got to look around and make sure that that yard marker is right. If you don't have, you know, I mean, they're volunteers on the chains. You know, get them squared away. Make sure the players know what's happening. The coaches should be aware of what's happening. They signal loss of down. Let's go, coach. So, I had it a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had it, too. I, I don't know what the... Uh, what the complications they're still talking over so we are thankfully ready to go Eric Montez back to do the punting Jake Lanning with the long snapping high snap Montez gets the kick away low line drive kick DeMarzo will field at the 10 And then fumbles it and will fall on it about the 11 yard line. So that's where Crestwood will put it in play for their first possession of this second half. 7.39 to go in the third. Berwick leads it 21 to 7. I have no problem with DeMarzo fielding that. It's coming at him and he can see downfield there's no potential tacklers. If he does muff it and he can't get it cleanly, he can just fall on it. You're not going to lose any yardage. So uh, nothing wrong with his decision there. We'll see where they mark the football. It'll take a while for them to do it. This, <laughs> this, not, this, this crew does not have dinner reservations anywhere. Now we're down. 11-yard line. Crestwood. First and 10. Still not set. Petrosky under center. I formation. Toss sweep to left side to Miller. Miller hit behind the line. He'll lose yardage. Berwick again so tough against the rush. Anthony Sisko had the great penetration and slowed Miller down. And Blaine Cleaver had the great contain from the outside linebacker here on the left side. Miller Took on the contain and then still reaches on in. Goes low when he turns the runner back and helps trip him up. They'll lose a couple yards. Three to be exact. Back to the eight-yard line. Second down and 13, Crestwood. Back at their eight. Harding is the fullback ahead of Miller in the eye. Petrosky under center. From the eight, Miller again. This time the left side and nothing doing. Another negative play against this terrific Berwick defense. Yeah, Jake Lanning from the defensive tackle comes up. Eric uh, Montez joining in as well. Yeah, I believe that was... Yeah, Landing in there now because Zalutko was in on that play as well, the 55. That's a loss on the play. Back to the seven. It's third down and long for Crestwood. And we have a injury timeout, I believe. There's a stoppage. They're looking at number 36. Um, that's been Ryan Harding. He's a two-way player for the team. 
working on his elbow. They may have taken a timeout. Again, people coming over, getting water. You know, some places the officials signal who right, call the timeout. <laughs> and did Harding the come out? Now, if it's an equipment Why situation, the, Harding can come and they said. can make the stoppage. And I'm sucking a lot of water, both huddles, though. We're ready to go. Third down and 14. Crestwood back at their seven-yard line. It is up against the school in a non-parking area. Petrosky. We do need the truck move. Play fake, throws it to and Logan Arnold, and Arnold has the completion. Arnold out, the I believe, just out short of the first down yard. Dallas Schechterly yard. came up, wrapped around. Two others tried to pull the man back. Watch that chain guy, Jimmy. Okay, he's two football lengths short, but they've often called those as first downs. 12 yards on the pickup, but they do not get the first down. They're about a yard short. Ethan Shudak is back to do the punting for the Comets, standing back at his five-yard line. Tegan Wilk back in single safety for the Bulldogs. Good snap. Kick is away. Very, very short and high. And will go out of bounds around the Crestwood 40. So Berwick in great field position with 534 to go in the third. Bulldogs take over leading Crestwood 21 to 7. Bulldogs are going to take over first and Need to play to some straight free ball here and drive one on in. They've been dominating in the stat sheet. Need to dominate on the scoreboard. Short field here after that punt comes up short. First and ten, Berwick moving from our right to our left in this third quarter that has 534 remaining. What a great job they do. Bulldogs leading 21-7, but that goes for the Berwick looking for the knockout punch as they have a slot to the right side. Tegan Wilk wide to the left. Wilk goes in motion. Lobo has the shotgun snap, gives it to Lopez. Alejandro Lopez straight ahead. We'll get to about the 36-yard line. Alejandro Lopez has been in a tailback for the entire second half. Aiden Mason was doing the ball carrying in the first half. He had 42 yards and a touchdown on 11 carries. He looks to be standing there rather healthy on the bench, so perhaps they're splitting time at that position. And Lopez, a good changeup, a different style running back than Aiden Mason. A little shiftier. Not as big, obviously. Slot to the right. Wide receiver left. Second and six. Bulldogs from the 36. Ball ball out of the gun. Has the snap. Gives the ball to Lopez. Straight ahead. He stood up but breaks free and gets to the 30-yard line. Great effort by Alejandro Lopez. Runs hard. He uh, exploded into the hole, but there was no hole there. There was a man Lopez there who stood him up, but then he bounced off to the left. left. Brendan DeMarzo meets him three yards downfield, and he slips away from that one as well. Third down and one. Berwick as Lopez comes out on this third down play. Yep, we're gonna go for Bulldogs in four down territory, sure. They have it at the Crestwood 31. I formation, Aiden Mason is the fullback, Tegan Wilk the tailback, Wilk gets the call off the right side, has the first down, inside the 30, close to the 27 yard line. Matthew slipping, eventually getting in, grabbing him by the knees and twisting him down. But you have that momentum deep in the eye, you get the good blocking, you're going over Noah Craig, so at the point of attack you're going to be strong, and Berwick gets the short yardage situation. First and ten, Berwick at the 28-yard line of Crestwood. Blaine Cleaver is the tight end on the right. Eric Montez is a blocking back to the right. Again, the eye formation with Montez, the fullback, ahead of Tegan Wilk, versatile player who's now the tailback. A pitch to him, and Wilk, looking for room, is stood up, but makes a good second effort. He's ridden out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. He took the pitch high, and yet still kept his momentum going forward. He tried to put on the brakes, and I thought he almost downed himself. I think he caught himself with his hand, spun, and then worked his way to the sideline for positive yardage. Six yards altogether. Second down and three. Boy, Dallas put it a licking on Valley View tonight. 31 to nothing. Ooh, surprising. In the third quarter. Berwick, second down call coming from the Crestwood 22. 
I formation. Wilk at the tail of Tandem. Fake to him. Law ball back to throw. Big pass rush. Rolls right. Keeps the football. Has it at the 15. Has it at the 10. Goes high in the air. Trying to hurl a tackler. And is down around the seven yard line. DJ Kulak was the man who got in hitting position. Never dropped his head though. So even though we're watching the quarterback oh, trying to hurdle, he does get upended after eluding the blitz. He runs to his right. Tacklers are pursuing him in the backfield. He turns it into a quarterback run and a very successful one. Boy, Ryan Lawball having a big night. Carrying the football, 15 yards on that carry. First to goal, Berwick. Give him That's Crestwood, seven. Give him 61 yards on the game. I formation, Wilk. At the tail of the tandem, Montez ahead of him from the seven. Tegan Wilk on the call, off the left side, running hard, and spins around to about the three, maybe the two-yard line off that left side. Cole Kakalichik coming in, the freshman linebacker. Strong running by Wilk to get the positive yardage. Second and goal, Berwick. Trying to get a knockout punch here with 2.15 to go in the third. They lead 21-7. to and a second down and goal from the three again the eye formation Montez ahead of Wilk Waba gives it to Wilk off the right side great blocking and he gets in for a bowling touchdown Tegan Wilk from three yards out yeah targeted the right guard Noah Craig Tegan Wilk looked saw there was a seam just a little bit to the right of the right guard he planted, broke into there, took it in standing. Strong run, strong play. Second touchdown of the game for Wilk. His previous was a 50-yard reception from Ryan Lombard. Now Brandon Hinkle, who's three for three in this game, extra points out of the hold of Tegan Wilk, who awaits the snap by Jake Lanning. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 154 to go in the third. Berwick 28, Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio HLM. Ready to experience the Ken Pollock Ford difference? At Ken Pollock Ford, we've combined America's best-selling truck with NEPA's most trusted dealer. Stop by today and experience for yourself why the 2019 Ford F-150 should be your number one pick this season. Take home the 2019 Ford F-150 today and receive $8,000 in bonus cash on select models. You'll be wishing you upgraded sooner. With safety to depend on and durability to rely on, Ken Pollock Ford will give you that Ford feeling. Drive away in a vehicle you want from a dealer you can trust. Ken Pollock Ford, 1120 West Front Street Berwick and online at KenPollockFord.com. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Berwick on their second possession of this third quarter. Those seven plays, 40 yards. Tegan Wilkin from three yards out for the score. Brendan Hinkle. With the extra point, it's now 28 to 7. Bulldogs, 154 remaining in the third. Eric Montez will kick it off. For Bowen. Kick is very, very high, and it'll be Garrett Swank at the 11 yard line, up the middle 15, 20, 25, 30, and Swank tripped up as he gets to the Crestwood 34 yard line. Shane Levan coming on in again. He had a nice play in the opening kickoff of the game because the ball was stripped away, popped in the air, and it fell into his hands. This time he's the one doing the hitting on the ball carrier, bringing him down. First and ten for Crestwood. Again, they're playing the second half without uh, one of their real stars, Brandon Naminski. He's got his uh, right arm in a sling to start this second half. Ball at the 35-yard line of the Comets. First and ten. Petrosky out of the gun. Gives to a man coming around. Kreitzer, he's got a little bit of room, and then he's brought down. Boy, coming a long way is Tegan Wilk. That play looked like Kreitzer it had a chance carry. for something big. Number seven on Instead, the they mark it at the 39, a gain of four. Just a second carry of the season for Nick Kreitzer. Sort of an end-around action, and the free safety has a good look at that from his position. He sees Kreitzer coming from the far left side behind the backfield and heading to the right. So he's able to angle up very well. Slot to the left side, wide receiver right. Kreitzer again in motion. 
But back to throws. Petrosky setting up a screen. It's run well by Tegan Wilkin. He picks it off. That's a 25 to 20, the 15 to 10, the 5, and he goes in for a touchdown. touchdown. Tegan Wilk read that screen beautifully, picks it off, and goes the distance for a Berwick touchdown. They let him use his instincts, Jim. They like him as a true free safety where he's free to go, where he feels the play is going to go, and, boy, it pays off there. There was a roll to the right, and they wanted to screen it to the left. But the pass rush prevented him from getting the ball off when he wanted to. He made a poor decision in throwing it late with a higher angle. Tegan Wilkes, seeing the screen develop, runs into it, takes the ball away, and scores. And a timeout was called. 59 seconds remaining in the third. Berwick 34. Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio HLM. If you have a child that's interested in gymnastics or if you've been practicing the sport for years, then Access Gymnastics Academy is where you want to be. Their dedicated coaches will teach you everything you need to know to perform your best. From the basics of flexibility, form, and style to advanced techniques that will improve your rhythm and style during a routine. Call Heidi Rebuck at Access Gymnastics Academy at 570-441-5969. That's 5 570-441-5969. Now enrolling for beginner to advanced classes at 917 East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Berwick, Devin Smith uh, injured on that last play. That was the reason for the timeout. He's on his feet. He was injured really on the Crestwood sideline, but he's walking across the field now as Berwick gets ready to try an extra point. Uh, Brendan Hinkle's been terrific in these extra points this season. The sophomore, 32 for 35 coming into this game, and perfect tonight as he tries for another Berwick wasn't sure what their kicking game would be like coming into this season, but they have to be thrilled with the way it's turned out. And Brendan Hinkle, two for two in field goals on the season as well. So here's the extra point attempt. Hope I didn't jinx <laughs> Brendan Hinkle. The sophomore gets set out of the hold of Tegan Wilk. The snap by Jake Lanning. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field. 59 seconds remaining in the third. Berwick, 35, Crestwood, 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Air Conditioning sells comfort. Since 1972, S.J. Kowalski understands the importance of doing business locally. They service what they sell and take pride in customer satisfaction. S.J. Kowalski is a trained comfort specialist, a Lennox dealer, and they are Northeastern Pennsylvania's premier dealer of Mitsubishi ductless mini split systems. S.J. Kowalski also sells and installs energy-efficient Renai water heaters and geothermal systems. Call 1-888-KOWALSKI and ask about special promotions and zero-interest financing. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Tegan Wilk, his fourth interception of the season. Two of them back for touchdowns. Berwick extends the lead to 35-7. Montez kick is a beauty. And Kreitz are back at the five-yard line to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, the 30. Nice return. Right, Kreitz are out to the 37-yard line. And that's where Crestwood will put it in play with 51.5 seconds remaining in the third. Blake Maher getting down in his lane. Able to grab the jersey and pull the man down from behind. Well, what a safety Tegan Wilk is. I mean, he just read that screen beautifully. You could see the quarterback, like, hesitate. I don't know if I should throw this. And as soon as he let go, he just burst in front of it, made the play, and got the touchdown. He threw it to the area where the screen was developing. You never expect a free safety who's looking at pass and a good pass fake to be in there in a screen. Petrosky gives it off the left side and nothing doing. His Berwick defense has just been terrific. We, we mentioned uh, as this second half began, 
just how strong Berwick has been in the third quarter. They have now outscored the opposition in the third, 48 to 7, as this third quarter comes to an end with 25 seconds remaining. Second down and eight for Crestwood at their 34. With Devin Smith suffering an injury, Berwick going with a different look. Quarterback Ryan Lawbaugh in at cornerback. It's the give to Garrett Swank straight ahead, and he goes nowhere. Being that wall of white, Dallas Schechterly, Mason Lawbaugh there on the final play of the third quarter. With the score, Berwick 35 and Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Dental Health at Berwick Dental Arts, 105 West 9th Street in Berwick. State-of-the-art equipment comes together with a tradition of 45 years of personalized care. From the youngest to the oldest patient, let Berwick Dental Arts doctors and staff take care of every aspect of your dental needs. They'll process all types of insurances. Make your appointment today. Call Berwick Dental Arts friendly staff at 752-4542. Berwick Dental Arts, making smiles beautiful. Berwick Bulldog Foot. In HLM Sports, in the fourth quarter, Bloomsburg leads Hughesville 35 to zero. In the fourth, Schmokin leads Danville 20 to 14. And in the fourth, Warrior Run leads Central Columbia 14 to 10. For HLM Sports, I'm Raven Klein. Berwick Bulldog Football, HLM. Chip Doyle and Andy Lickey from Crestwood High School in Mountaintop. Three quarters in the books, and Berwick. Leading Crestwood by a score of 35 to 7. The Bulldogs have taken control of this one as they try to go to 7 and 1 on the season. They'll be going to Dallas next Friday to take on an unbeaten Dallas team, assuming Dallas can hold on to a 31 0 lead at yeah. Valley View after three quarters. I think they can. <laughs> Powerhouse up there, Dallas. Crestwood moving from our right to our left. Third down and seven. Petrosky fires, has Swank. Swank backtracks, looking for the first down. He has it. Down the sideline to midfield and forced out of bounds in Berwick territory. Garrett Swank isn't very big, but he is a tough receiver. 5'8", 160-pound senior made a nice play there. And the Comets get to the Berwick 45-yard line with the first down. Put a move on the corner, little spin, send that man flying. And then he worked the sideline with the speed. 20 yards on the reception by Garrett Swank, the senior. Second leading receiver on the team coming into this game. Of course, Crestwood playing the second half without their leading receiver. Brandon Naminski on the bench with an injury as Petrosky back to throw. Dumps the pass off incomplete. He did a great job. He actually went to his left hand to get that pass away as Eric Montez and Mike Zalutko were all over him. Yeah, Montez took the passing hand away, the right hand. He shifted the ball to the left, flipped it, and it should have been caught. Timeout, Berwick. 11.34 remaining in the game. 35-7 Bulldogs, you're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio HLM. Getting hurt at work can put you and your family at risk. You need to call your lawyers at Lenahan and Dempsey now. They are your work injury lawyers, your car and truck accident lawyers, your personal injury lawyers. Your lawyers at Lenahan and Dempsey have won hundreds of millions of dollars for injured people just like you. Call Lenahan and Dempsey now. Call your lawyers and get help now. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Following the Berwick timeout, Crestwood facing a second down and 10 at the Bulldog 45 yard line. Comets moving from our right to our left in a fourth quarter that's just underway. 11.33 remaining. Berwick leading by a score of 35-7. to Logan Arnold is the tight end replacing Brandon Naminski for the Comets. As Petrovsky back to throw, wants to go long. There's not time to do that. Eric Montez wraps him up at the 44-yard line. Montez crashing on down from the right defensive end. Sees the quarterback stepping up. No longer needs to play contain. Catches him at about the line of scrimmage. They'll call it a gain of half a yard. If Eric Montez is not 
selected all state. There needs to be an investigation. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. You just don't get any better. Gives you his heart and soul on offense, on the specialty teams with his kicking. And, boy, defensively, he's stellar. Third and nine. Crestwood at the Berwick 44. Petrosky gives on the play. Off the left side, yes, and so. Eric Montez wraps up Ryan Miller after a gain of about three on the play. Fourth down. Crestwood probably going for it here in Berwick territory. I actually thought we're finally going to see Montez make a mistake, but I think the design of the defense was to have him crashing inside and the outside backer play contained. He still recovers from his area of responsibility to get in on the tackle on the wide play. We have a conference by the officials. I've had a lot of them, Jim. <laughs> These guys may not get together all that often. <laughs> Don't know what, and they don't throw flags. When they measure, they don't bring the chains out. I, <laughs> they don't flip the down marker. Now they're waving a flag away that I never saw thrown. I, I'm surprised. So here we go. Fourth down, and about six for Crestwood at the. 41 yard line. I don't think it's speeding up. Quarterback still on the sideline with his coach, and we have 25 seconds to get this play in. And now a timeout, Crestwood. 10.43 to go, 35 7 Bulldogs. You're listening to Burley Football and Sports Radio HLM. At Traditional Home Health Care, their beliefs make all the difference. You have the right to choose the highest level of health care in your own home, from pediatrics to seniors, as well as non-skilled home care services like meal prep, housekeeping, and companionship. They'll work with you every step of the way to create a care plan for your loved one, because Traditional is more than a home health care agency. They're your extended family when family can't be there. Visit TraditionalHomeHealthCare.com today. This is Bur Football coach Carm D. Francesco, you are listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog Football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Ten forty-three to go in the game here at Crestwood High School. Berwick leading Crestwood by a score of thirty-five-seven. The two games involving undefeated teams. We're not all that competitive tonight. Southern Columbia defeating Wyoming area 42-0. And last we had Dallas leading Valley View 31-0. Here, Crestwood fourth and six at their own 41. Following their timeout. Petrosky out of the gun. Slot to the right side. Petrosky rolls to his right. Looking, looking. Fires downfield. Comeback attempt at the 30 four yard line looking for the first down the far side DeMarzo with the catch and they do move the sticks nicely done by Ryan Petrosky and Brandon DeMarzo yeah yeah he ran off roll to the right the wide side of the field his receiver was going down the sideline and then the comeback pattern as you mentioned Jim once he got to the chains made sure he had enough Crestwood at the Berwick 33 Petrosky back to throw. Looking long, firing into traffic. The ball goes incomplete. Pass was incomplete. Tegan Wilk in that area. I don't know if I'd be throwing. Wilk looks like he's down, wants to work a cramp out of his leg and feels he might have enough time to do it, but the officials are going to whistle the stoppage. And the pass was intended for Kreitzer. But good coverage by Berwick. Wilk had a teammate there. Injury timeout, 10-10 to go. 35-7 Bulldogs, you're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio, HLM. It's Alexander Family Buick GMC's end of summer clearance sale. Great summer sales have left us overstocked with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles. One owner, local trades, off-lease cars and trucks, all reduced to sell. Get a 2017 Cadillac XT5 for only $28,988 and an 18 Chrysler Pacifica only $23,988 or an 18 Buick Encore for just $16,988. Check us out online or stop and shop in Bloomsburg for the lowest price guaranteed. Alexander Family Buick GMC. We're taking deals the other guys won't. 
Lions. This is Broadway football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Don't forget after the game that Capital Keegan Wolf, the injured player for Berwick. He's hopping off the field. Looks like a, a cramp. I tell you, that's some hop he has. Yeah, yeah. Side. A little one foot on the right foot, keeping the left hamstring free. And now he lost a shoe in the process. Yeah. But that's good news for Berwick that it is, in fact, just a, a cramp. He's had a typically spectacular game for him. He caught a 50-yard touchdown pass. He ran three yards for a touchdown. He intercepted a pass and returned it 30 yards for a score. And now back to action with Crestwood with 10-10 to go with the ball at the Berwick 33-yard line, facing second down and 10. We have a typical delay. Petrosky out of the gun. Has the snap. Fires a quick out to the far side. Has a completion to the 26-yard line. 11 and 11, Brendan DeMarzo, and then Preston uh, Robbins. Robbins coming up to make the hit. He'll get about seven on that stop. Third down and four. Little stop pattern. Yeah, I'm surprised, actually, that uh, Crestwood hasn't gone to more of those outs because there's no time for the quarterback to throw, but that was such a quick out. Ehrlich's front four not able to get to Petrosky. Who's back to throw? Flag down the play. This is going to go against Crestwood as there is a completion to Kreitzer inside the 20, but they had a player in motion and he crossed the line of scrimmage well ahead of time. So this will bring Crestwood back. Now it'll take a while for this one <laughs> to be walked off. And to be honest, Jim, he doesn't even need to cross the line of scrimmage. The motion man cannot be moving forward at the snap. And they've been doing it a lot throughout this game. They, they get good quick starts. I'll give them that. But I thought they've beaten uh, some of the snaps. And here in the motion, I think I've seen this a few times, where the man starts upfield before the snap comes, and you can't be moving toward the line of scrimmage. In any case, they'll, they'll <laughs> maybe mark it off. <laughs> Look at where are the chains, I think, already moved. Have the chains moved yet? This no, is, and they'll be slow. This is actually painful. Or, or funny, depending uh, on your <laughs> standpoint. Yeah. Five-yard walk-off. It'll be third and nine. Crestwood at the 32-yard line of Berwick. Yeah. Petrosky back to throw. Big pass rush. Rolls right. Looking, looking. Throws the last moment. And it's incomplete. incomplete. Fourth down. Took a hit on that sideline. Again, Berwick just gets after the passer. You know, when you think about their success defensively this season, if you could totally shut down the run, which they have against every opponent, including Valley View, and get after the passer, I mean, what more is there? <laughs> Here's a fourth down and nine coming for Crestwood at the Berwick 32. It's been a slow-moving second half, Jim. And it's mostly, I hate to say it, but it's the officiating keep it, Keep it moving, <laughs> yeah. Peyton Williams in at a corner position for Berwick. Blake Bauer in there. Here's the fourth down play. Petrosky hit as he throws. The ball's tipped and incomplete. As Blake Bauer got a hand on the pass intended for Nick Kreitzer. So Berwick will take over the football with 9.13 to go. And 35-7 to is the Berwick lead over Crestwood. I think we'll see Berwick get on in there and try to dominate on the ground. Move this ball on down with nine minutes to go. Take the rest of the time off the clock. And we may see some subs as well for the Bulldogs with that 35-7 to lead and the big game coming against Dallas next week. It is uh, the regulars in there. Lopez will be the tailback in the eye. And Aiden Mason will be the fullback ahead of him. So Carmen DeFrancesco probably figuring what you're figuring. Hey, let's get one time-consuming drive. Lopez gets it outside, 45 to midfield. And Lopez still on his feet to the Crestwood 45-yard line. 
Beautiful run, pushing 20 yards. Running off the left side, and as you mentioned, Jim, weaving his way between the hash mark and the sideline, making people miss as he explodes upfield. 23 yards the carry by Alejandro Lopez. First to 10, Berwick at the Crestwood 45-yard line. Over here on the home field side. Check for your keys. As Bulldogs put it in play, Heimbaugh, center over the football. Again, I formation. Baba gives to Lopez again. Lopez straight ahead gets to around the 40 yard line of Crestwood where Ethan Stoltz makes the play. Yeah, physical hit. Everyone else slowed him down. He comes shooting up from a safety position with a high hit. But Lopez will still get four to five yards on that as they stretch it. Second and six, Berwick. Bulldogs trying to put this one away that 35 to 7 advantage wide receiver to either side Lawball milking the clock then gives it to Lopez Alejandro Lopez will be stopped this time after just about a yard to the 40 yard line hey Will Crestwood not lying down coming up playing aggressively making the stops in the play in the middle been very impressed with the number of their defenders. Jimmy Halney that time putting a shoulder in. Logan Arnold is another guy who I think has played very well for the Crestwood Comets. Very active. Third down call coming. Third and six. Berwick from the Crestwood 40. Lob under center. I formation behind him. He rolls right. Looks to throw. Fires on the run. Has a man on the sideline. Nicely done. Preston Robbins makes the catch and gets the first down at the Crestwood 33. Allows him to continue the drive. His momentum takes him out of bounds. He would have liked to have stayed in bounds and let that clock continue running. They're in the fourth quarter now in Peckville. Valley View finally on the board, but Dallas leads that one 31-7. to As Berwick, first and ten at the... Westwood, 33-yard line. Peyton Williams, wide receiver to the right. Lopez, the tailback. He gets the call off the left side to the 25, to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for a touchdown. Terrific run by Alejandro Lopez, 33 yards for the score. Yeah. Working his way, similar to the one he had starting the drive, breaking off the left side, using the block of Aaron Cashman. Gets him through the line of scrimmage and then weaving his way down until he finally can just turn on the Jets and go full speed. Another Berwick player cramping up at the end of the play down around the five-yard line. Oh, we'll have a little stoppage till they work him off. Yeah, the bad news is they've had a couple players cramp up. The good news is it's still warm enough in October for, for that to occur. <laughs> it is strange. It's not like it's, you know, that uncomfortable that you'd be expecting. It's not cramp season. Preston Robbins. Oh, look, he learned that from Tegan Wilk, the bunny hop. <laughs> yeah. Right leg hop, left leg out, and they speed themselves off the field. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fans were starting to cheer it. <laughs> Brendan Hinkle will attempt the extra point out of the hold of Tegan Wilk, who has had those cramps earlier, but he's... Back on the field, he'll do the holding. And Eagles kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field, 7.04 to go. Berwick, 41. Crestwood, 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLN. Financial advisor Jeffrey McKinnon about the exclusive confident retirement approach. It's a personalized, flexible, step by step approach toward financial balance. Call Jeff today at 570 520 4137. Offices are located at 22 South Prospect Street in Nanticoke, PA, and 118 East 3rd Street in Berwick, PA. The confident retirement approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. This is Berwick. Football coach Carm DeFrancesco, you are listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog Football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM.
right turn to Marzo, deep for Crestwood. Anticipating the kickoff by Eric Montez, Berwick's latest score, 33-yard run by Alejandro Lopez. Capping a five-play, 68-yard drive. And the Bulldogs have put this game into the mercy rule mode with 7.04 remaining. Montez kick very, very high. And Kreitzer at the 8-yard line to the 10 to the 15. And Berwick with great coverage as he's down in the open field at the 23-yard line. Dallas Schechterly getting on down as they try to bring it up the middle. He reaches out with the left hand. Makes a nice lateral move. Takes that kick returner down. Last year when uh, Berwick played Dallas twice, both extremely low-scoring games, 13-10. to 10. Dallas won at Crispin Field, and then 3-0 in overtime in the district semifinals. But, boy, these two teams can score points. I'll be surprised if we have another one of those games next week in the back mountain as Crestwood takes over their own 23, and Berwick has gone to a completely new defensive unit here. Ryan Miller is the tailback in the eye. Toss sweep left side for him. Has some running room down the sideline. 40, 45. Still on his feet. Did they mark him out of bounds? He's at the 15, the 10, the 5 in for the Sal. touchdown. But they are going to mark him out of bounds. Yeah. The, the young safety came over and put a shoulder in, which forced him to step on that sideline, and they did make that catch. Brandon Boone is the man who put the shoulder in him. The uh, Crestwood fans would have liked to have seen it in, but, uh, you know, it's right there. The officials on the play further up here. The enthusiasts for Crestwood would have loved the touchdown, but got to play by the rules. And it's a ball at the Berwick 47-yard line, so it's a 30-yard run by Ryan Miller, by far the farthest rushing play of the game. And now, Ryan Arcangeli will go to his bench. Ethan Shudak is the quarterback in the 47. Gives it to the fullback straight ahead and two-yard gain to the 45-yard line. Andrew Blockus from his linebacker position in on the play. Mike Jaroski had the carry to the 45 of Berwick. Second down and a clock running. Five minutes to go in this one. First carry of the season for Mike Jaroski. Jake Lanning along that defensive front for Berwick. Gabe DePippa there as well. The second down and eight coming. Number seven in a quarterback from Wide receiver to either side. Ethan Shudak will give it to the tailback who tries the right side. Ball came loose. Chase Pugh on the carry. It appears that uh, Crestwood has recovered. Stay with us following the game. Raven Klein will bring you up to date on the high school football scoreboard. Andy will have all the numbers for you as Crestwood now faces a third down and eight at their own 46-yard line. And I'll strive to get those numbers right, Jim. Uh, okay, you Fix always that want. that calculator. <laughs> Ethan Shudak is a sophomore for the Comets. 5'9", 170-pounder. And he get his first passing attempt of the season. They're in shotgun. Nope. Now he's going to run with the football, and Berwick blows up the play. A loss back at uh, midfield. Nothing doing. As Bulldogs got several people in there, Evan Meehan among the people. So a fourth down, and it looks like mass substitutions, punt coming on for Crestwood. Our Manny Mackey also went on that sack of the quarterback. Quarterback draw was the call. And uh, Berwick coming hard, able to stuff it. Drayton Wilk, the only ninth grader on this Berwick team, the younger brother of uh, Tegan, back in single safety. Anticipating the punt by Shudak. Good snap. Punts away. Very high. And they will cover it down around the 20 yard line. Berwick gets it for perhaps the last time in this game with 3.04 to go. And the Bulldogs leading by a score of 42 to 7. Ball at the 20 yard line. 
Berwick most likely will have the subs in, go with a vanilla type of running game. Most of the runs between the tackles. See which of the substitutes get the particular carries. They're huddled on the sideline. They'll come right to the line of scrimmage. Again, with Dallas's impressive win tonight in Peckville against Valley View, handing Valley View their first loss of the season. Big meeting coming up next Friday in the back mountain. Berwick takes on Dallas. Peyton Williams is the quarterback. The officials say this game's going too quickly. Let's call timeout. 2.39 to go. 42-7 Bulldogs. You're listening to Berwick Football on Sports Radio HLM. Ask Ameriprise Financial Advisor Jeffrey McKinnon about the exclusive Confident Retirement Approach. It's a personalized, flexible, step-by-step approach toward financial balance. Call Jeff today at 570-520-4137. Offices are located at 22 South Prospect Street in Nanticoke, PA, and 118 East 3rd Street in Berwick, PA. The Confident Retirement Approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Jim Doyle, Andy Lickney from Crestwood High School in Mountaintop. 239 remaining in the game. Berwick rolling over Crestwood. 42 to 7. Bulldogs following their timeout. First and 10 at the 21. Williams is the quarterback. Peyton Williams gives off to Logan Smith. And Smith, straight ahead, will pick up a yard on the play. He's got a final Dallas 37 and Valley View 7. So the stage is officially set. Berwick with one loss. On the road next Friday to take on unbeaten Dallas. Should be a great matchup. We hope you'll join us for the for the broadcast of that one. Second down coming. Peyton Williams takes a look at that play clock. Let's time bleed off. Gives to a fullback off the left side for a gain of a couple. When you weren't looking, Jim. The clock operator decided it wasn't mercy rule and had about 15 seconds of stoppage time. Did you see who made the carry? Well, that was uh, that was Stas Hughes. That was Stas. Yes. Yep. So now Berwick facing a third down and six at their own 25-yard line. Clock running 139 remaining. In this one, Williams under center, toss sweep to the right side. Logan Smith will come up short in the first down yardage by about three. He runs hard, though. He's taking the pitch. He wants to explode wide. He gets turned inside and just keeps on running hard. He'll gain a couple yards. It'll be fourth and about four. One minute, the clock running. I mean, you let this run all the way down before you decide what to do and then give them one play. Gavin Cunningham is uh, on that offensive front for Berwick. Sean Powell is in there. Sander Unger among the subs in for Berwick on that uh, offensive front. So they will let the clock wind down and then call a timeout. 40.6 seconds to go. Then Berwick will bring on the uh, the punt team. Again, Bulldogs lost two heartbreakers to Dallas last season. And Dallas has the majority of that team back. And they have really been running rough shot over the opposition. In fact, uh, that score tonight, 37-7. to That was... One of their closest games this season, a 30-point win, a 28-point win against Wilkes-Barre area, is Dallas's closest game of the season. They really have it going. Got a veteran team. Head coach Rich Bunnell has had a lot of these guys since uh, ninth grade. They burst on the scene. 
And Eric Montez back to punt for the Bulldogs. Crestwood will will let it go. And it will roll dead about the Comets 33-yard line. The hunt tonight, Berwick shut down the second leading receiver in the Wyoming Valley Conference in Ryan Miller of Crestwood. Next week, they'll get the number one rusher in the Wyoming Valley Conference in Lenny Kelly. Lenny Kelly burst on the scene as a ninth grader. He had a 200-yard game in varsity as a ninth grader. He is a terrific running back. Michael Starbucks, the veteran quarterback with the great name. We're leading the way for Dallas. Should be a great matchup in the back mountain next week. The shootout gives straight ahead for no gain on what will be the final play of this game. The final score, Berwick 42, Crestwood 7. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio, HLM. Mason's monogramic service has the biggest selection of Bulldog football items in Berwick. Mason's is family owned and is celebrating more than 30 years in business. Get all new Bulldog wear for 2019 like tees, tanks and polos, hoodies, sweatshirts, jackets and caps, even onesies and toddler tees and lots more for any Bulldog fan. Mason's also has screen printing for businesses, teams and organizations. Mason's monogramic service, 225 West Front Street, Berwick or at masonsmonogramming.com. How do you save money when you shop for groceries? If you haven't checked out Surplus Outlet, you're missing out on savings that could go right into your pocket. Hello, this is Justin Michaels, and at Surplus Outlet, we take saving you money very seriously. At Surplus Outlet, you'll find groceries and much more at below wholesale prices. We work hard to buy right and pass those savings directly on to you. At Surplus Outlet, we stock all the items that you would expect at a grocery store, but each week we get new arrivals, and the savings can be tremendous. So you'll want to stop in often. Surplus Outlet, with locations on Route 11 Northumberland, Route 11 Berwick, and Route 15 Montgomery. Are you looking to meet an elder care need? Do you or a loved one need assistance with any of the instrumental or basic activities of daily living? Brookdale Senior Living has a solution. Brookdale Bloomsburg, located at 420 Schaefer Road, is a premium personal care home offering a family atmosphere along with round-the-clock nursing care. Call 570-387-6868 to learn more. Better yet, we invite you to drop in and meet the Brookdale family and learn how we can offer an optimum aging experience for you or a loved one. When you need the services of a professional law firm, you need the law offices of Lutz and Petty at 916 West Front Street in Berwick. Lutz and Petty is your hometown choice for elder law and asset protection, criminal law, estate planning, real estate, and personal injury. The full service legal team of Lutz and Petty takes this opportunity to wish the Berwick Bulldogs a successful and injury free season. Call them at 570 218 4888. The law offices of Lutz and Petty protect. You go, dogs. This is Burroughs football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Burroughs Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Burwick. HLM. Bulldogs of Burwick have set the stage for a big meeting in the back mountain next Friday night. Dallas rolling over Valley View tonight. Burwick doing the same to Crestwood Bulldogs. We'll take a 7-1 record into that game against unbeaten Dallas next Friday. Bulldogs got off to a great start in this one. They recovered a fumble in the opening kickoff. Took over at the Dallas 39 after the recovery by Shane LeVan. Ten-play scoring drive capped on a five-yard touchdown pass. Ryan Lawball to Blaine Cleaver. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point. 7-0 Bulldogs, 7-0-8 to go in the opening quarter. Crestwood was able to tie it. They recovered a Ryan Lawball fumble in the second quarter at the Berwick 30. Four plays later, Ryan Petrosky rolled right, threw it deep into the far corner of the end zone. A great one-handed catch by Garrett Swank for the score. Alex Romanowski with the extra point tied it at seven. That was with 9.50 to go in the second. Berwick would take the lead on a 50-yard touchdown pass. Ryan Lawball to Tegan Wilk with 7.32 to go in the half. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point, 14-7 Bulldogs. And the last score of that opening half came on a 7-play, 50-yard drive, capped on a 5-yard touchdown run by Aiden Mason. Big plays along the way, a 14-yard pass, Ryan Lawball to Tegan Wilk, and a 20-yard pass completion, Lawball to Aiden Mason. 
And that was the Ken Pollock Ford Lincoln drive of the game as Berwick went in at the break leading 21 to 7. Talked earlier how Berwick has dominated the third quarter, giving up only seven points on the season. They gave up none in this one, and they scored on their second possession of that third period on a three yard touchdown run by Tegan Wilk, capping a seven play, 40 yard drive. There was a 15 yard run by Ryan Lawball along the way. Hinkle with the extra point, 28 7 Bulldogs. And then late in that third quarter, just under a minute to go, Crestwood tried to set up a screen. It was read beautifully by Tegan Wilk. Picked it off, went 30 yards for the touchdown. His fourth pick of the season, his second, returned for a touchdown. Hinkle again with the extra point, 35 7 Bulldogs after three. And in the fourth quarter, capping the scoring on the night, a 33 yard run by Alejandro Lopez. A five-play, 68-yard drive altogether. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point. Came with 7.04 to go in the game. That was it for the game. The final score, Berwick, 42, and Crestwood, 7. We'll check scores with Raven Klein and check stats with Andy Elickby. Stay with us. You're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio HLM. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. Any questions, ask them. Let's dream and make it happen. Time to feel the way a friend can make your day. For the big decisions, every step of the way. Your hometown bank, the first place to go with your big time plans. Together we'll grow every step of the way. First Columbia Bank. Riverview Block of Berwick with over 75 years of service can handle all your block and concrete needs. They carry all sizes of concrete block, including decorative E.P. Henry landscaping block. Their concrete is PennDOT approved and delivered with front discharge trucks. Riverview Block also carries masonry supplies, tools, cement, sand, and stone. For prompt delivery, call Riverview Block, 570-752-7191. Riverview Block is proud to support the Berwick Bulldogs. Berwick Bulldog Football. In HLM Sports, scores tonight. Final, Bloomsburg wins over Hughesville, 42-6. Final, Shemokin defeats Danville, 28-21. Final, Warrior Run beats Central Columbia, 14-10. A final, Southern Columbia beats Wyoming Area, 42-0. A final, Dallas beats Valley View, 37-7. A final, Loyal Sock beats Milton, 53-14. A final, Mount Carmel beats beats South Williamsport, 59-0. A final, Chickalimi beats Holy Redeemer, 35-7. In the fourth, Jersey Shore leads Lewisburg, 47-21. In the fourth, Scranton and Hazleton area are tied at 15. In the fourth, Wyoming Valley West leads Abington Heights, 21-13. A final, Sealands Grove beats Central Mountain, 38-21. In the fourth, Pottsville beat, it was leading Jim Thorpe 32-17. A final, North Spookle leads Blue Mountain 39-7. In the fourth, Wilkes Fair area leads Wallen Paw Pack 37-24. And a final, Montoursville beat M- Mifflinburg 38-0. For HLM Sports, I'm Raven Klein. Berwick Bulldog Football, HLM. Bounce top receiving 42-7 the final. They defeat the Crestwood staff from this game. Andy Lickford with 344 yards on its 61 plays. They hold Crestwood to 106 yards on 44 plays. For Crestwood, the split is 104 yards in the air, just two yards on the ground. Berwick again playing stifling defense against the run. 23 rushes for just two yards. Ryan Miller, who uh, came in with the second best numbers in the conference. He was held at uh, 11 carries for just 6 yards before he broke off a 30-yarder in the fourth period. He finishes 12 carries for 36 yards, a fellow averaging 111 yards a game. Mike Jaroski had 2 carries for 2 yards. Ethan Shudak, the quarterback, tried to draw, lost 3 yards on that. Ryan Petrosky, the starting quarterback and second-leading rusher on this team, averaging 50 yards a game, well, well not tonight. Against Berwick, seven carries, minus 33. Sacks and tackles for losses as Berwick really plays that run well. Uh, Average the positives and negatives. Look at it all. 23 running plays, just two yards in the rushing game. 
I have Petrosky as 10 completes in 21 attempts, one interception, which Wilk took back for a touchdown on a screen, uh, stepping in nicely on that. I have him with 104 yards in the air. Brandon Dominski played the first half of the game, and then in the second quarter, we kind of think he suffered that uh, injury. One of the leading receivers in the conference held without a catch. Garrett Swank wasn't, though. He has three catches for 56 yards, including a 21-yard touchdown reception. Brendan DeMarzo, three catches for 25 yards. Ryan Miller had two catches for a net of seven. Logan Arnold caught one for 12, and Nick Kreitzer caught one for four. 104 in the air, just two in the running game, a total of 106 yards for the Crestwood Comets in their total offense. For Berwick, 344 yards on 61 plays. The split is 208 in the running game, 136 in the passing game. Aiden Mason had the carries in the first half, 11 carries for 42 yards. Alejandro Lopez seemed to be the man getting the carries in the second half. He finishes with 10 carries for 86 yards. Beautiful touchdown run in there. Also with carries, Blake Maher, 3 for 23. Tegan Wilk had 4 carries for minus 1. Logan Smith, 2 carries for 3 yards. Stas Hughes took one ahead for 4. Blaine Cleaver came into quarterback for one play, was sacked. He lost 10. Ryan Lawbaugh did some very nice positive runnings and avoiding sacks. Nine carries in all for 61 yards to lead the team in the rushing department. Of course, he's going to lead the team in the passing department as well. I have him as 8 of 12 with no interceptions, 136 yards. Tegan Wilk had two first-half catches for 64 yards. Preston Robbins caught one of the few second half passes an eight yarder there to get the chains blaine cleaver caught three in all for 25 yards including a five yard touchdown pass and aiden mason who had three catches coming in adds two catches in this game for 39 yards eight of 12 passing for ryan lawball 136 yards in the air 208 on the ground gives berwick 344 in total offense compared to the 106 that the defense did give up and again with that split of just two yards in the running game jim we're ready for a big time matchup next week <laughs> it is the stage is officially set crestwood with the loss falls to five and three they'll be at pittston next friday for berwick they'll take a seven one record to the back mountain to take on a dallas team that is undefeated and rolled over valley view previously unbeaten uh tonight in peckville 37 to 7 was the final there our broadcast will start as usual at six with the lenahan dempsey coach de francesco show hope you'll join us for that one the final again tonight Berwick 42 crestwood seven for andy lickney and our producer raven klein this is jim doyle reminding you you heard it live on sports radio hlm You've been listening to Berwick Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Brought to you by First Columbia Bank and Trust with you every step of the way. Bear, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Berwick. Lenahan and Dempsey, attorneys at law, the right choice when things go wrong. Berwick Dental Arts, quality care for your dental health. Mason's Monogram Service for all your Bulldog merchandise. The Medicine Shop, East 9th Street in Berwick. Neighbor Fence Company, residential and commercial fencing. Your Berwick State Farm agents, Lori Powell, Sean Black, and Melissa Price, hometown agents who understand Berwick's needs. First Keystone Community Bank, yesterday's traditions, tomorrow's vision. Caregivers America, supplies, therapy, home health, and care. Caregiversamerica.com. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick for all your home improvements. Ken Pollock Ford Lincoln, Northeast PA's number one trusted dealership. Yannick Real Estate, commercial and residential. Mayo Funeral Home of Berwick and Chicxetti. Welsh's Towing and Repair, Towing, Recovery, and Lockout Services. ND Accounting and Consulting. Consulting your hometown CPA firm, Riverview Block Inc. of Berwick, the law offices of Lutz and Petty, protecting you. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Cooling, the way the earth intended. Alexander Family Dealership, Central Road in Bloomsburg. Access Gymnastics Academy, East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. Name brand liquidations in the Berwick Plaza on Route 11. Advanced Auto Services, West Front Street, Berwick. Jeffrey McKinnon, financial advisor with Ameriprise Financial Services Inc. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Brookdale Senior Living, 420 Shay. Road in Bloomsburg. Romeo-
Palio's Italian Submarines and Sasser Sweet Stop, 1306 Orange Street, Berwick. Knock Busters Archery in Berwick, where good friends come to get their knocks busted. Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, Route 11 in Danville, for the best price and hometown value. Traditional home health care, 120 East 3rd Street in Berwick. And by Surplus Outlet, Route 11 in Briar Creek. HLM is the Valley Sports Leader. 